What's going on, guys? Today's episode is brought to you by Ridge Wallet, and that's because I got sick and tired of my old school bulky wallet. I didn't want to carry in my pocket anymore, and I am not one for man purses. So this is the way I went. Uh, holds up to 12 cards, has a money clip, so it takes care of my stuff that way. The whole thing is about the size of a credit card, so slides right in my pocket, no problem. Also comes in about 30 different styles. This is forged carbon, but it comes in aluminum, titanium, a whole bunch of other colors and materials. If you buy right now, between now and September 18th, any purchase is going to enter you into a contest to win a Jeep Gladiator. You can get the off-road version or the convertible version if you win. And all you got to do is use code RBP or go to ridge.com backslash RBP. Click the link in the description. Go to ridge.com backslash RBP or use the code RBP when you're buying and it'll get you 10% off. Plus it will enter you into the contest. Win that Jeep, guys. Thanks a lot. Check out Ridge. It's not, my sound isn't as good as usual. Paul, what's up? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. It's clear. Got a new studio. Go ahead. You got a new studio? Is that your yeah. backdrop? Yeah, well, I, there's a picture I got to put up still. Well, Tony's going to hang it. But um, what picture are you putting up? It's just a picture of like the sky and an ocean. I'm going to show you for a second. It's a picture of a sky and an ocean. Yeah, it's like yeah. Sh yeah show me. Show sky. me. I want to see. I want to see this picture. Okay. Let's see. Okay, hold on. I didn't buy. I didn't buy it. Tony bought it. It's okay. It's okay yeah. if you bought it. You don't have to lie. I didn't buy it. Honestly. You know, I would never buy a picture. <laughs> Unless it was like you know. Let me see. Is it? Oh, it's inspiring. Yeah, isn't it? It's inspiring. <laughs> <laughs> i got a picture of fucking muhammad ali knocking some motherfucker out and you got a picture of a sky and a beach <laughs> tony picked it it's her office she gets to pick it i guess yeah i guess yeah she got all her diplomas to put up too and i don't have anything to put up well you can pretend they're yours i was gonna put my trophies maybe my no, no, my nobody trophies. nobody can read the diplomas you just just be like those are all mine uh, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah but now you've told everybody so now that you can't fucking lie anymore well they probably knew i didn't have an education <laughs> <laughs> you have an education in the streets, Paul. Education, right, for that. The education in right. the streets is more valuable. The mean streets of South Detroit. <laughs> <right. laughs> uh, so, since you're an IFBB pro judge, I thought we would go over the Arnold and not to make predictions. I just want to mm -hmm. know what you think about a couple of competitors because yeah. I think it's important to get your opinion. I mean, every, we all have opinions, but since you're a judge, it might be a little bit more valuable to people. Perhaps. Uh, and the Arnold's is very close. So we'll just go over this really quickly. And then I got some other stuff I want to talk about, but uh, I want to show you the list. It's not the complete list. I still don't know where the fucking complete list is, but this is the list I have so far. And then I guess Cedric's not on it. Yeah. And then, you have, and then I think you have to add Nick and Roly. And I don't know if there's anybody else I'm missing, but let's just go with that for the sake of it, for the sake yeah. of the extra. So I don't, I'm not going to ask you who's going to win or who's going to lose. I mean, maybe we can get to that, yeah. but. But what are what are some of the big stories you think of the Arnold? We haven't seen Sergio in a long time. Interesting to see uh, how he comes out and looks like. I think. I think so let's so let so let's discuss Sergio. When was Sergio's last show? Uh, Twenty nineteen. He did. This. Has was it been it, that long for him? Has it been two years? Was it New York? I don't think he competed last year at all. So I, you're probably right. Yeah. He won that show, right? So Sergio's been off for. So let's talk about Sergio. So Sergio has a great physique. He was fourth, I think, as high as fourth at one of the Arnolds. Yep. Um, I think Sergio has been off for a while, so he has had time to put on muscle. Yeah. And the only other thing I think, so this is a thing I would think as a, as a bodybuilder, I would think to myself, he's had a year and a half off. How much progress has he made, right? Because the kid grows like a fucking weed. Right. So how much bigger is he going to be, right? But then I also think he also started a supplement company. Yeah. So I, I know as a supplement company owner myself, how much work that takes and how much effort and time it takes from your schedule. So I don't know if that's going to play a part at all, or if, yeah. or if he's got like good enough help where he's able to focus and put on the muscle. Yeah. Um, so I feel like that's Sergio's story, right? Like, is there anything I'm missing? You think about Sergio? Like, what do you think? What do you think Sergio needs staying on the Sergio topic? What do you think Sergio needs to do to win the Arnold's if he can win the Arnold's? Uh, out of this lineup, especially, um, yeah. I think his biggest challenge in this lineup, 
you know, I mean, no, not to pick placings, but, you know, Ian and Steve probably, well, then you got William Bonac too. Um, Sergio, like Sergio's got that mass that still is aesthetically pleasing, which is, you know, a rare mm -hmm. combination. Um, so, you know, I think he probably just try to recall back from what he looked like last time he competed. Um, I would think that he needed to put on a little bit more size, you know, and, and, uh, to crack that, uh, that upper echelon, uh, like you're saying, he got fourth at the last Arnold's to, to move up a few placings there. I think he needed to be a little bit thicker, maybe. Um, does he look, this is does, a recent picture. I mean, it's hard to, I know it's hard to tell from Instagram because Sergio always looks crazy on Instagram, but for sure, is it, does he, I mean, he looks bigger to me. Yeah, he does. And, and he doesn't get blown out. So I think he'll keep his aesthetics too, as he gets bigger. Yeah. I don't think he's going to, yeah. I don't think the one thing for sure is I don't think Sergio is in any danger of all of a sudden walking in and like having his lines not there. Right. Yeah. And that's, he's lucky to have that frame that can support that too, you know, yeah. so it doesn't get blown up. So what do you think he needed to do from, obviously this is when he's really young, but what do you think he needed to do from here where I think this is his fourth place at the Arnold. So from this physique, from what you can tell, what do you think he needed to do most to all of a sudden go from that fourth place spot to third, second, or first? Uh, from what I can recall from what he looked like back then, a little bit more thickness in the chest and back, maybe, um, you know, which, you know, might sound crazy. how thick the guy is, but I mean, to crack into that next tier, I think he's going to need, you know, a little bit more thickness in those two areas. Um, but maintaining that, that, you know, the aesthetics that he still has, his legs are crazy. His arms and shoulders are crazy. Yeah. You know, I he's got he's got shape he's got you know he gets dry he gets hard I've i just always, think a little bit more thickness i've always thought of sergio as a limb guy you know yeah, how, you know I mean, so. you know we always talk about guys and how sometimes they have really big limbs or they have a really big torso and it's like not often that you get somebody who has the best of both i've always considered sergio more of like a uh his positives are more on the limbs like he's got great like you said great arms great legs mm -hmm. great shoulders He's got a good chest and good back, but definitely those are the areas I think I agree with you that if he can bring up his back, especially, I think, uh, I think he'll be more dangerous. Yeah. Like if he can build like a top, you know, top three, top five back in the world kind of back, he'd be hard to beat. Yeah. Because it, well, it's partially because his structure is so big, right? Right. I think it's, he's such a wide guy. He's a little bit taller and he's such a wide guy that I think he needs that extra back thickness to really fill I didn't up. Know how wide. Sorry. No, go ahead. I didn't know how wide he was until I met him with you um, yeah. last year at uh, uh, in Ohio. Yeah. Um, yeah. He's wide, very wide in person. Yeah, that's the thing. You know, it's funny. Him and Kuklo are very surprising that way. Kuklo also is extremely wide. I don't know if you've ever met Kirk Kuklo in person. Yeah, I have a couple times, yeah. But yeah, he's really, remember, like, I don't know if you recall, but he's really wide. And then Sergi Sergio is the same. Yeah, and I, I know. I think... Kuklo has done a little bit better job probably because he's been a pro for a little longer filling out mm -hmm. his physique. But I think if Sergio has caught up in that way, because he's, because Sergio has already beaten Steve at this Arnold. So I think if Sergio can fill out that back, he moves up even more. I think so too. And then because, I think he's in that top tier. Cause I mean, imagine, imagine, you know, you have a keem with all this mass, mm -hmm. but if, if Sergio is able to bring up his torso, then you have a guy with a ton of mass, but also has shape. Right. And then that becomes very dangerous. And he can get conditioned and dry too. Yeah, he does get conditioned. He's Definitely. got thin skin. So that's Sergio's story to to move up, right? That's mm -hmm. what we, kind of, we kind of both agree on that. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing him. Do you think, it doesn't look to me from like this, I mean, like I said, this is Instagram, so you never know what's what. But from these shots, it doesn't look to me like owning a supplement company has slowed him down at all. No, this is recent? I think so, yeah. This is yeah. like, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, I mean, this is, like I said, it's an Instagram. It's a good angle and all the lighting, but for sure, you can still kind of see he's got all yeah. the size still. He does look thicker, no doubt. His, his, shoulders, his shoulders, his shoulders <laughs> actually look better than before, which is crazy to think. Yeah, for sure. He's, that's going to be really interesting to see what he looks like after two years. Yeah. So, uh, and then, so we go from Sergio. Let me see here. We have, so some of the other stories. So let's talk about Ian, because I think Ian's an interesting one because he gets written so ian's like uh i find ian to be like a love hate kind of bodybuilder guys either like completely write him off or they're like up his ass they're like ian's gonna win Ian's gonna kill everybody or they're like ian sucks ian's like horrible and i don't know why that is 
Um, but so Ian's won two shows going in. So I would say that Ian has the most momentum going into the show. I think Ian's got the most momentum of any pro right now, probably going in. Yeah. He, uh, he's, he's, he's turning some heads and he's, you know, last year's Olympia, he looked super impressive. I, you know, his best, his best showing ever. And he, he, he looked even better than that at his last show. And I thought he looked better at the second show than he did the first show this year, his conditioning and his fullness. And yeah, he's, I mean, that's a deadly quarter turn, right? But that's his, like his best shot, but it's, it's crazy how good that looks. Yeah. He's getting that grainy hardness too. He's cause I think cause he's filling out more. I think he always had that grainy hardness. I just think cameras aren't catching it. Yeah. That's very true. Yeah. He, that's why it's who's, it's whose photos are that? Is that Whitman or something like that? Photos that does that? I, I'm not sure that this is, there. this is a BBR. They're all different, but uh, you know, Ian was talking about one of our podcasts. He said, you know, skin texture is not noticeable in fit photos and video. Mm -hmm. And he thinks that's the reason why people watching don't give him the credit he's due because they can't, they can't really see the conditioning he's in. I agree. Especially in video. Yeah. Well, especially in video. I agree. Yeah. yeah the videos, the pictures, video always looks, makes everybody look softer. Yeah. Cause pictures, you can darken it up a little bit like this guy. I, I forget the guy's name, but does those pictures. This is, this is Walt Whitman. This is Walt Whitman. Okay. Yeah. His, yeah. Uh, he does that. That, that is so just perfect for Ian's physique when he does that, you know, yeah. when he changes the, the backdrop and that. Yeah. So, so this, so he's got the most momentum going to the show now as a judge, Paul, and I know, you know, you're always, you're actually like one of the most impartial judges I've ever talked to because you I try to be you maintain your, you want to maintain your integrity and your, yeah, you know, it's important. And I'm sure other judges are like that, but I just yeah. know because I talked to you personally, but mm -hmm. so, but human nature is human nature. So how much mm -hmm. does the momentum mean in a judge's eyes? I, yeah, you know what? I think it, it, subconsciously, whatever, it can definitely sway a panel because, you know, when things are really, really tight and, you know, crowds will get behind someone who's got a lot of momentum, like right, right now, like Ian. And, yeah. you know, and I think Ian's probably his, reaching his peak popularity right now. Um, not to say that he won't continue to get better and more popular, but I just think right now he's, you know, the highest he's ever been. And uh, so I, people are going to get behind that. And he's got that kind of look. He's got a hardcore bodybuilding look that people are going to love. So, you know, if it's in a tight show and the crowd's going crazy for one guy over the other, and even the athletes themselves might not realize it, but when the crowd's pumping you up, you're, you know, you're yeah. hitting shots harder. You're, you know, that's, it, you know, it's just things are easier to do on stage. And, you know, we talk about a lot for when guys are starting to fade on stage. And a lot of times that can be mental too, right? Like, you know, you know, the crowd's not for you. You're suddenly not hitting your shots as hard, whatever, you know, and you're yeah, yeah. slowly fading. And so I don't think it's done on a conscious level, but I definitely think that momentum can sway a panel. I mean, you know, it's crazy. Ian's like, he's underestimated but when you watch him actually pose and like this yeah it's it's very impressive yeah like he's very... I think what i've always liked about ian and it gets missed a lot in pictures is his his transitions he's really impressive in his transitions you can yeah. really see how hard he is well he's very professional in his in his presentation as well he's not stuttering around he's not dicking around in between poses like he's mm -hmm. very crisp in how he moves from one shot to the next mm -hmm. um so momentum wise, and like, and like, and I do agree with you when the crowd is behind you and, and you've talked to me about this as a judge, if a guy is posing harder and a guy looks more confident, your eye is kind of drawn to him, correct? Absolutely. Yeah. It's just human nature, I think. Yeah. So let me ask you this, and this is going to probably sound racist to a lot of people, but how does, does the blonde hair, <laughs> yeah, does, does the, that ever stopped you before? Yeah. It doesn't stop me. I don't, cause I don't give a shit. So <laughs> Does the blonde hair, blue eyed, golden boy, you know, all American boy, even though he's Canadian, yeah, does that play into it? Are they like uh, this is this is the perfect face for bodybuilding? <laughs> I can only speak for myself, but it doesn't play into it. I don't even look no. at the faces. I know, I'm just no. fucking around. Um, <laughs> okay, so but he does like in this shot, he does look like fucking Superman. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> with the hair. I'm yeah. How <laughs> <laughs> jealous these guys like that? You know? Well, because he's he well, he's only thirty one. No, he's not gonna have any hair when he's our age. I don't know if we, I didn't have hair like that at 31. Look at that. I, I had hair like this at 31. No, you know, you didn't. Yes, like I that. did. Look at that. Yes, I That's did. Beautiful. I'm telling you, I had hair like this at 31. I know I, I did. I, well, I had you a, couldn't it, have grown it like that. No, listen, it didn't look like this, but I had a mohawk and it was thick. The, to think about it. 31 was the, the, was the Flex Pro. I still had all my hair at the Flex Pro. Yeah, but it wasn't like that. Fred. Yes, it was. It didn't start uh, really thinning until 33 to 35. Bring up, bring up a picture. <laughs> okay. um 
What was I going to say? Uh, but he, and also, Ian is thinning in the back where I was. Oh, is he? I didn't notice yeah. that before. Yeah, he's, he's got, got such got, thick hair. He he's, got it. The, he's got the island in the back the way we, the oh. way the way I did back in the day. Oh, that, that slowly that's, starts to spread. That's why I said he's gonna he's gonna end up like us in ten years. He, he should get a Propecia now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think, he, I think he is. <laughs> so let's see. Where's the Flex Pro? This is the Flex Pro. So I had thick hair, kind of. Let me see. <laughs> you can't tell. <laughs> you can't, tell. Like you can't tell. It's just a strip. That's why you can't tell. <laughs> Look how thin that strip is, though. I can see right down the middle of it. I can yeah. see. Yeah, it is pretty thin. Maybe you're right. <laughs> Maybe you're right, Polly. But this <laughs> this one's better. This is I was 28 here, 29. You can start to see the lines up. Yeah, you can starts, start to see the scalp. It's just because my hair is dark. If it was blonde like Ian's, it would blend. The scalp would blend in. Uh, I doubt it, but maybe. Think, think about it. Think about it. I got black hair and a lighter head so you're going to be able to see the scalp if I, had, <laughs> if I had blonde hair it would match look you can't tell oh, look how thick that is eh? fuck no, that's <laughs> thick man there's, not, there's no comparing that you can style that however you want it <laughs> wait a minute this is back when I was well, how the far do I have to go back to have hair uh well what was your boy this is, this is this is 2011 so this was a flex pro this is 2000 look okay, that's thick that's 2007 Bring up one of your amateur. Uh, no, shows. no, this one's this one's thick. This is 2007. Look how thick that is. <laughs> That's not thick for it. You can't see through it. Well, it's a dark background. If that was a white background, I for wow, sure. That was exactly stuff. my point about this. Look, it's a white guy with blonde hair, so you can't see the hair. <laughs> this is what I'm saying. <laughs> Ian, Ian's hair looks like rope. Yours look how, is look like, how look how thick that hair is. <laughs> it's like a little bit of cotton. That's all it is. Oh, fuck you. It's because it's small. It's because it's it's wait, I gotta find a picture where I had hair. Check your amateur days. I had fucking a mohawk for so fucking long. Bring up your Windsor picture, your first show. Let's see if I can go all the way back. Look, look how thick my hair was here. <clears throat> Let's see. Look. Let's see. Look how thick my hair is here. Fuck you. See, look. look at, it, you can almost track. You can almost track the decline there, Fuad. <laughs> 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 You can literally see look at, the decline. Look how, look how thick it is here, 23. <laughs> yeah. And then we go like, like this is like 20, this is like 26 or seven, I think. <laughs> this is like 30. No, no, this is 25. But look, see, it, it, my hair was really thick here, but you can still see my scalp. But I remember, <laughs> it's, but it's because there's a light. That Dude, means it's not really thick. No, you asshole, because it's for shooting a photo shoot. There's literally, if you could see the background, there's a light literally above my head. Oh. So it's not, it's obviously going to look like that no matter what. There's a light literally beaming onto my scalp. Okay, I'll give you that. So it's still not like Ian's. It is here. You just can't tell. <laughs> so you're saying because it's not there. So you're saying even when I was 22, I didn't have hair. <laughs> not like Ian's. You're an idiot. You didn't. I'm just being honest. Okay, look. Here's this is. What was, okay, there's pretty nice. Yeah, this is what I'm saying. So when you look at this one, there's a fucking light beaming onto my scalp, so it looks like I'm thinned out. But when you look at like this, look how thick it is there. That's the okay, same. Yeah, that's this is thick. like this is like the same age. It, you, you got any back shots? I want to see what your back back of your head looks like though. There. <laughs> <laughs> look at look how thick that is. Look at, look at <laughs> you. You gotta you gotta create a timeline to it, so we can see <laughs> the actual year by year I, decline. I already know where it went. This is like this. This is like 24, 25. I think this is like twenty three. This is like twenty eight. Still there. It's nice and thick thick mohawk. And then <laughs> as you get older. But see, it's like it's like that. This is all the way back when I started, man. It's my first show. Yeah. Under the lights, it's always going to look like that. Because yeah, my hair, true. my hair, my hair wasn't thinning like when I was twenty. Yeah. Well, and you got product in your hair, so it's making it shine more. No, but like literally, I was twenty-one years old here. My hair was not thinning at all at twenty-one. But under the light, it looks like you can see my scalp. Yeah. So look at young Fu out there. I judge you there. This one. Look, yeah. how sh look how shit I was. I know. I gave you a gift. I didn't even know how to fucking pose. Yeah, I felt bad for you, so I gave you first. Yeah, right. I didn't want you to quit the sport. We I both we, potential. We both know that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, enough about me. So, yeah. uh, en enough about me and my great hair. <laughs> back to well, Ian's. Back to Ian's great hair. Yeah, I'd like to see your fucking timeline. Look at your fucking hair. Mine all happened after forty. Before that, I had a lot of hair. No, you think you had a lot of hair? Well, I, I, used, I used to have good hair. I used I specifically, to have the, uh... I specifically remember ripping on you for like over a decade about you thinning you just held it's on 40. to it it thinned. it's been almost a decade i'm 49 yeah, now. yeah so, you yeah. kept yeah you kept it low yeah you like yeah, 38 once i had kids once i had kids the kids fucking ruined it 
the sleep, the lack of sleep made it all follow. <laughs> the kids fucked your hair up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. We're totally off track here. Let's go back to the show. Uh, okay. So Ian, um, what does Ian have to do? So Ian was seventh at the fucking Olympia behind Akeem. Akeem's competing in this show. Um, what do you think Ian has to do to get ahead of Akeem? You know, I don't know if he needs to do anything right now. He, he, you know, I'd like to see him stand next to Akeem right now. And, you know, because last year, at the Olympia last year, Akeem was sixth and Ian was seventh, right? Yes. And, um, you know, the, the, the show that Akeem did earlier this year, I, I think I was gone away that weekend, so I didn't get a chance to watch the, the live feed of it, but I saw some pictures afterwards. I don't know that Akeem changed as much from last year's Olympia. You know, I don't know. I think, you know, he... I think he's pretty much stayed the same. I didn't see the big, a big change in his physique from last year. Um, but Ian has gotten better, in my opinion. Well, Akeem's working with the Camel Crew. Now. Oh, that's right. So I don't know if that's going to mean he comes in like super full and a little bit off, or he comes in like super hard and grainy. Yeah, like, I don't know because we've seen guys from the from the O2 gym come in like really, really big and like maybe a touch too full. Right. We've what also seen. We've Sorry. also we've also seen guys come in like bang on fucking full and hard. Yeah. So I think I think lately their guys seem to be coming in like perfect. What do you think uh, would be a better look for Akeem, big and full or shredded and not as full? No, man. I think Akeem has so much muscle that he can get away with like being a little flat. I agree. And I think he should err on the side of being a shredded. Like I've never seen Akeem look small. I don't think it's like possible. I've, ne I've never seen Akeem do a show and I'm like, oh yeah, he lost some size or he's too flat right. or like, I've never ever thought that. So if I was, if I was coaching Akeem, I would, I would be like, look, let's, let's go 5% under and get right. you crisp as fuck. Right. Yeah. Be I, because you know. that's, that's, yeah, that's Akeem's only knock. Like, I guess, okay. So we're switching from Ian to Akeem now, but um, Akeem's only knock is that his back doesn't get super hard and dry. Right. And the highlights, you know, you can't do nothing about that though. Yeah. I mean, the way his back's shaped, I mean, it's yeah. still, the thing about Akeem is it's like his back is shaped, like, you know, he's got the high lats and everything, but it actually works to his favor. For the front like it, it does. It makes him look fucking really wide. From the front? Even from the back. I mean, it's not my favorite style of back. Yeah. But it does make him look like he's got these really thick fucking lats, even though they're high up. Yeah. I think it makes so, his X frame from the front look ridiculous. That's true too. Yeah. No, definitely. So we're going to take a look at Akeem. Uh, this is his last Arnold performance. I don't know where he placed this Arnold. I'm sure somebody in the comment section will let us know, but he fucking looks crazy. Like yeah, he's mass crazy, massive legs, fucking massive shoulders and arms, thick chest, waist is good for a guy that's that big. It's literally his back is his only weakness. And I don't even think it's the thickness of his back. It's just more the conditioning of it than anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, just back holds so many points though, you know, like it's, when your back is, you know, not up to par with some of the other guys, it's hard to make up ground, you know, with that weakness, even though he does, but to crack that next tier, you know, do you, since we're on to Akeem here, do you think Akeem can win this show? Because if you remember, like a lot of people have William winning the show right now or in, yeah. uh, as the favorite and yeah, Akeem, so. Akeem was only one spot behind William. You know, at the Olympia, at the Olympia, Bonac was fifth and Akeem was sixth. So it's not like he's that far behind. So can Akeem, do you think if Akeem can bring the back end dry, can he beat William? Yeah, I think so. Because uh, I think the problem that William's running into is almost too big for his frame, you know, where like he's still got nice shape and all, but like it just gets to a point where how much muscle can you put on a frame with, where it, you know, where you start to lose some of your aesthetics. And I, I think that's a problem that William runs into. And, you know, and I guess he's working with the Camel crew now too. Um, I think so, yeah, yeah. You know, so is that going to, I don't know if that's going to be working for him or not, you know. Look at the size of Akeem's leg when he turns sideways. Here. Look at that, see that side shot? Can you rewind it for one second? No, no, it's going gonna, it's gonna to go around. Watch. Oh. Watch, watch. It's like, it's fucking nuts. Watch his leg. Yeah. Look, watch his, uh, look at his leg here. from the side there. Yeah. His hamstring glute. Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. <laughs> Jeez, I never seen that muscle before. I, that's <laughs> yeah, I don't know what that muscle is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think enough. You know, it's weird. You know, it's with a with Akeem. I think what it is, he's he's kind of a he seems like more I don't know him, but he seems like more of a quiet guy. Yeah. And his Instagram is more quiet and he doesn't really kind of say a lot of controversial things or do controversial yeah. things. 
So I think he almost like, even though he's like the biggest guy in the show or one of the biggest guys in the show, he flies under the radar a lot. Even on my own, like I always forget when, when we're doing lineups and stuff, I forget about Akeem. And I think yeah. it's, it's not out of disrespect. I think it's just because he's a quiet guy and I forget sometimes that he's there and how good he is. Yeah, he doesn't get as much respect as he deserves. Eh? I don't know if respect is the right word. Not enough publicity as he deserves. I think it's publicity because I think when people do talk about Akeem, they talk about him very highly. Yeah, like I okay. don't think it's I don't think it's disrespect because nobody ever says Akeem. Oh, Akeem sucks. He's not going to do well. Yeah. When, whenever his name does come up, it's always like, oh yeah, Akeem, and then they're like, yeah, he's he's going to be in top three or top five or whatever, right? So yeah, yeah. I think he uh, just flies under the radar, but I wonder also is that going to matter to the judges? Cause it hasn't seemed to matter to the judges to date. Cause he's still always plays as well. That, that shouldn't matter. At least in my opinion, that shouldn't matter. It shouldn't matter how much you see the guy on Instagram. No, 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 no. That's not what I mean. That's not what I mean. I'm saying like subconsciously, will the judges overlook him because he's a quiet guy and he's not like, you know what I mean? Will will they make the yeah. same mistake we're making or no? I don't think so. I think when you see that on stage. Yeah. You can't ignore it. Yeah. yeah. You know, I'd love to see him guest pose. Yeah, we should get him to guest pose at our show. I know. That's what I was thinking. Imagine him. Maybe that'd be incredible. Yeah. Yeah. I miss those days of the old, you know, the big guest posers. But this is what I mean about his back. Even though his lats are high, it still seems to look good on him. I know. His back double bicep is a good, pretty good shot. But still. I think it's because his waist, like his, his lats are high. It almost makes his waist look smaller. Yeah. Yeah. And it just looks more freaky. Yeah. Can you find a back lat spread shot of him, Fuad? Right there. Look at that shit. No, lat spread. Oh, there it is. Okay. That is a lat spread. That still is. Fuck. That's what I mean. Like it makes his lats pop right out. And then his fucking erectors are like stupid thick. <laughs> this guy's like a real life incredible Hulk. You know what? The more I look at Akeem's physique, the more I'm like, he could fucking win. Yeah, he can for sure. You know, we did a podcast last week and I said, and somebody says, oh, you can't keep changing your mind. You change your mind all the time. And I said, man, these guys are all so close. The more I look at the physiques as the show gets closer, the more I'm going to change my mind. Right. You know, like I'm like, not going to, I'm not going to be able to leave my final prediction until like the last week. Yeah. You know, like, you know, like now that I'm a pro judge, you know, like, don't get me wrong. Like, you know, I'm very happy and I'm very proud of that. And I can't wait to judge some more pro shows, but sometimes like when I think about it, I'm like, what if I ever did judge, you know, like the Arnold's or Olympia, some of these guys are so fucking good. And so the, you know, the yeah, margins think- between them are so small. It, I don't want, I don't want to fuck up a call either. You know what I mean? No. Like, like you worry no. about it a little bit. No, I think you'd do good, man, because you, you're you good at dissecting physiques. And and it, and you know about – the one thing that you know about, and you've even taught me this, is how to look at an overall physique and not body parts. Yeah, and you know, think, that's something I learned over the years. Yeah, and I think that's what a lot of people get wrong when they're trying to judge, like – you know, like I noticed it when when uh, Ian beat Phil Klahar in Tampa, for example. Yeah. They're like, well, Phil's got a better back and Ian's back is not as good as Phil's. And I'm like, okay, but that's one body part. Right. Like you're not looking at the, the total sum of a, of a physique. Yeah. And I think, and I think, and I, yeah, I think you would be fine, man. I think that's, you know, you know well, enough you about the sport and you've been in the sport long enough. Yeah. Um, I just hear your own worst critic, you know? So this is the Olympia and we have Bonac over here. I don't know if you can see it. It's kind of small, but let yeah. me see if I can, is that better? A little bit? Uh, a little bit. I know it's hard to see, but yeah, whatever. there's there's Bonac way on the left and a yeah. way on the right. I mean, I guess you can't tell with them not so them so far apart, but yeah. yeah. But he like if the you know if the question is can Akeem beat him? Oh yeah, he definitely can beat. The thing is, him, I think Bonac always comes in. Okay, so let's before we move on to Bonac, let me ask you. So Akeem can win the show. You think if Akeem is shredded from head to toe? back to front everywhere do you think akeem can win the show yeah he can like has a good chance to win the show i I mean all these guys this is the one thing about these predictions that people get mad in the comment section i think any of these guys can be first through eighth oh yeah there's at least five guys there that can win the show so nobody get offended by any of these placings because we literally are just like trying to assess the best we can yeah so what i'm saying is does akeem I know they all have a chance to win, but does Akeem have a good chance of winning if he's peeled all around? Yeah, I think he's got one of the best chances of winning the show. Yeah. I, I think, uh, you know, if you were to play odds, you know, like Vegas odds on this, yeah. you know, you probably have Bonac with the uh, lowest odds, you know, um, followed by either Akeem or Ian probably. Yeah. And, you know, and then maybe Sergio there too. Like, don't forget Nick. 
Oh, that's right. Nick's in it too, isn't he? That's right. that's he's getting better by the day by the looks of it. That's what I said. That's what I said. Jeez. Like, so this is interesting. That we'll, we'll, we'll bring that up after we talk about Bonac because I, I had this interesting conversation with uh, Nathan and James on the last podcast. So we talk about Bonac. Um, I shouldn't have closed that. Yeah, I totally forgot about Nick in the show too. So, oops. So William Bonac, is he the favorite in your opinion? Based on, on previous placings, yeah, I would think he's got to be the favorite. He was what, top three Olympia three years in a row? Yeah, last year he was fifth. Yeah, I would, I would say going into it based on previous history, he's got to be the favorite. What, is bon- what does William Bonac have to do to fend off Akeem or Nick or anybody else or Sergio or Ian or any of these other my, In my opinion with William, I think it's kind of like the same thing as Akeem. I think he's got so much muscle, he runs the risk of coming in too full and then losing some of his shape and aesthetics. I th- I'd like to see him come in a little bit depleted almost and shredded and see how he looks that way because yeah, his if- waist will look smaller because he's got crazy muscle. But you got to remember what happened a couple of years ago when he did the Arnold with Brandon. Remember he did the oh. Arnold in, I think it was 2019 with, okay. with Brandon Same Curry. With, Sergio. with Brandon Curry, yeah. And he took second to Brandon that year. And I think it was the knock on, knock on him at the time was he was a little flat. Oh, really? Because, yeah, because Bonac, even though he has so much muscle, it's like, I think he loses a little bit of detail when he's not full. Okay, yeah, so he looks softer than he is. Yeah, and because he's so, like, he's not a wide guy. Mm-hmm. He's very compact and he's got you know he's thicker through the midsection and i think if he doesn't have that detail he doesn't look as as like there's the wow factor is not there yeah and he's got kind of a short torso yeah so if he's too full and blown out yeah i think his aesthetics can get thrown off so basically if william is like 100 percent bang on he can probably win this show yeah like i said i think if you're gonna put odds on it he'd, be, he'd have the best odds Look at that. That's a crazy physique. Eh? Look at the quads. Yeah, he's He's got a crazy physique. Look at the quads, the way they just fucking just billowing like fucking wide sweep. And they and they start on like his hips, eh? Yeah, oh yeah. Sweep. Yeah. That's yeah, next. that's going to, you know, so I had this conversation and we'll move to Nick. So I had this conversation with the guys on the last podcast and I said, Nick can beat Bonac because they are the same type of bodybuilder, right? They're both shorter guys, packed with fucking muscle, thicker through the midsection. They're not like flowing pretty physiques. They're just very heavily muscled, very good structure, very good balance, very little weak points. But when I look at Bonax physique now, I'm like, is the one thing that he has that Nick doesn't have, is it the detail? And that's something that Nick is, is, is getting quickly though you i know, know for a young man i know that. you know his last show he showed a lot more detail than his first show i think um one thing what the advantage that nick is going to have over william though i think is nick's like for being a shorter guy nick is still pretty wide right yeah like, when he's on stage he's he takes up a lot of space yeah well he might you know if it's close between those two you know nick might you know he's a little bit and william's a little bit more compact so that might make Nick look bigger on stage, you know, especially from the front shots. So this is the advantage that I find. Um, the advantage I find with Nick over William is that he's wider. Like you said, his shoulders, his clavicles and his shoulders are just, he's got more real estate. Mm-hmm. But that's why I ask, because I think Bonax strong point over Nick will be the muscle insertions, the separation, the detail in the muscle, the flow, which, which, Nick is getting, he's definitely got, you know, striations everywhere, but does he have it at the level that William does? Yeah. And I don't want to discount Nick because I didn't think he would improve at the rate that he has. Like I thought Nick would be a great bodybuilder one day, but I didn't know that he would progress this quickly. Like the last year for him, his body is like, man, his last show, that was impressive. That was very impressive. I thought, well, I feel like he's very, he's very diligent and he doesn't cut any corners and he doesn't, you know what I mean? Like this is a bodybuilder's bodybuilder. And he knows what his weak points are or were, and he's, made them into strong points now look you at know this. like look, a, I, just, you know, I just noticed this look at this fucking rear delt pop off the back like it's just fucking it's crazy man so the, but this is what i'm talking about so when you look at nick's physique right shredded hard separated but the separation is not as deep as williams 
Not yet. Not yet. Right. Cause William's obviously in his forties now. Right. So like, I'm talking about like the shoulder split in, right. you know, the tricep area and like the split between the quad and the ham and like very, very small details that only a judge would see. Yep. Um, or like when you go to the back, you know, these lines on William are very deep. Yes. Right. So I wonder, is that going to be the difference, right? Is Nick just need more maturity? Well, that will be the thing, right? It'll be William's detail versus Nick's advantage and width. That's right. And that it's going to be interesting to see whose strong point overpowers the others, you know, That's advantage. Right. That's right. Because size wise, I think they're pretty equal. Like they both have great legs. They both have great hamstrings. They both have, both have very wide, complete backs. They both have mm -hmm. great arms and great shoulders. I think William's chest is maybe a little bit better than, than, uh, than Nick's, but like yeah. you said, but Nick, I think has more overall size. Yeah. Like Nick's as far, arm. as far as just the mass of his physique. Yeah. He takes up more room. I just really think the only, like the one thing that William has that probably nobody else on stage has really, like, if you think about, it's not just, it's not just Nick. If you think about anybody else on that stage, does anybody else have this type of detail? Like, and look that, at, look at how thick like, and how thick and how deep the, the lines are in between each muscle. And the full rod, the full muscle round attachments. Yeah. That's you what know? I'm saying. Like, like the, the, way round, the round, the muscle bellies, the round muscle bellies. Yeah. And I want to know, like, I, I want to know from you, like, do you think anybody on that stage has this type of thickness separation and detail all in a combination? Maybe not to the extent that William's at yet. I think some of these guys will definitely be there and are, are on their way to being there very soon. Um, Maybe Williams, just because Williams been around a little bit longer than these guys, you know, they haven't had a bunch, you know, they're, they're not quite there yet. But, um, but I, I, you know, he's got, I think he's got to find that night, that right combination of, of, of conditioning with fullness. Because this is, this is a tough lineup. If he's off, what are these other guys? Oh, no, we're to... not. Yeah, but we're not. And, and we're not trying to predict any, I'm not trying to make predictions because we don't know what's going to be Everyone, I don't want to do predictions anymore until like, we'll just do them for fun at the very end. I'm just trying to tell the story of each guy. So like, I don't know if William will win or not. Maybe he'll win, but I'm just saying like his strong point versus the others yeah. is well, to me, and you correct me if I'm wrong, but to me, it's the fullness and the separation and the detail of each muscle at a, like at a level that I don't think anybody else has in this lineup. I, I would agree with that. I would agree if, for sure. And, and I think it also, for me, at least for William, it's also that roundness, that roundness to his muscle. Yeah. Which yeah, I guess, you know, Akeem too, but Akeem's just, I don't know, it's just different. Like you're talking about like the attachments, you know, the flow to his physique, you know, when he's on well, yeah, that's a great physique, an awesome physique. Well, I think like, you, you know, you can say like Akeem has a roundness, right. And even, and even Nick has a roundness, like Nick has very round shoulders. And mm -hmm. so you can say that, right. But then you look in the middle of that muscle. Like if you take, like, say, take Akeem's quads, Overall, they sweep really wide. They're very, very voluminous, like they're thick. But do they have the same separation in the center that Williams do, right? Like those cuts in the middle. When, yeah. you, when you turn Akeem to the side, it's crazy. Everything's stripped out. The hamstrings are stripped out. Glutes are dug out. But from the front, does he have the same detail? And then he loses a lot of detail in the back. You know what I mean? So it's like, yeah, it's just, a, it's just the thing about William that's tough is it's not only that there's no weak point but there's no muscle that's not completely carved out and maxed out. Yeah. And maxed out. Like they're all very full, mm -hmm. very separated, very detailed. It's, it's a, you know, it's going to be really interesting to see. Cause I think you're right. I think William's going to have to be off a few percent to really, to have somebody stand next to him and kind of, you know, him, you know, have him step aside and have somebody overtake him. Right. And it's going to be interesting too, for like, you know, I'm sure he's not happy with fifth place last year's Olympia, you know, to get knocked down two spots from his previous. Yeah. So, you know, it'd be interesting to see how he comes in. Like, he, you know, he could be wanting blood and come in best way we've seen yet. Yeah, that's true. Um, so we go from William. Uh, it's too bad Cedric's not in the show. Uh, I was kind of yeah. looking forward to that. So that sucks. Um, we have Hassan Mustafa, who is a ton of muscle, but I think has just done so many shows this year. I, I don't know if he's going to be able to master that conditioning. Yeah, I agree. Uh, we have Justin Rodriguez, who's looking crazier and crazier with each update. But, yeah. and, I don't, and I don't know if this matters. I don't want to say, uh, I don't want to say this does matter or doesn't matter, but 
he's not in the same level of conditioning as the other guys, but Justin is also known for getting ready like really quick. Really? Like his, yeah, he's known for like his physique changing in a very short amount of time. Okay. So I don't want to say anything, but like all I'm saying is like when you look at this, it's not as close as where Nick is conditioning wise, right? Yeah. So I wonder, you know, is Justin going to pull this together really quick at the end? Or, or what is it? Yeah. Um, He's not, it, how far off of where Nick is, do you think? I'm sorry. Oh, conditioning wise. Yeah. Uh, a couple percent for sure. Nick, yeah. uh, Nick's, Nick's, Nick's a little bit harder than that right now. I think um, a lot more detail, like with the Nick's last shot of his back, his back to bicep, his glutes are shredded already. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. He's still got a few, I'm sure he's still got, you know, a bit more weight to go, but like, he looks like, a couple of weeks out where Justin, Justin, I think looks a little further. Justin's got that roundness though. Right. So let's assume, let's assume that his conditioning is going to be there because like I said, he gets ready a little quicker than, you know, when he yeah. wants to. Yeah. So let's assume his conditioning is going to be on his roundness is very impressive. Yeah. And it's framed too. those wide shoulders. Yeah. Can, can Justin overcome Nick or has Nick already proven that he can beat Justin? You know, Nick, at the last show that when Nick, when Nick came first and Justin was second, uh, I was surprised. I, I, I thought that it was, Justin was going to give Nick, you know, more. I thought Nick, Justin would be a lot harder for Nick to beat than that. Before but Nick you, seemed to beat him. Before, like, you pretty, said, before, before you saw them, you thought that. I thought that before I saw them yeah. together. Because yeah. Justin impressed me the week before or whatever it was, two weeks before at the first show he did. Yeah. Everybody yeah. won the first show he did. Yeah. Uh, Justin looked really good there, I thought. And, he, and he, I, didn't, I don't think he looked as good at the second show but I still don't know if it would have been enough to beat Nick, even if he was at his best. Nick, that seemed to be like a pretty convincing win. Yeah. I think Justin, part of the issue with Justin, I think right now is uh, in his, his quads, at least to, from the front and maybe even from the sides and back, I just don't see as much detail as I do, you know, even with Nick. Well, a lot of it, a lot of, guys. a lot is left from the, I don't know when this, this is, uh, when is this from? I don't know what show this is before, but so I don't want to say anything, but his legs from the back here look slim compared to, you know, Nick or Bonac or, you know, Ian for or, sure or, or Akeem from the front. He's got a nice sweep to his leg. But you know the detail, I mean? the detail is definitely not as thick as some of the other guys. Yeah. Yeah. It's, deep, not as, yeah. it's not as deep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I think in this lineup, you know, I don't know. I like Justin. I think he's a great bodybuilder, but I don't see him in the top half of this lineup. Yeah, there's a lot of it's going to be a really tough competition for him. Mm -hmm. There he is. Guy, what's up, man? 45, hey, 50 minutes late. Nice to finally see you. <laughs> this is a record for you. He can't hear us. He looks like an old man wearing a hat like that. <laughs> Not either. There he is. This is a record for you. 50 minutes. Dude, it's bro. Let me wait, 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 wait. Let me guess. Paul, listen to this. Let's, Paul, listen, 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 listen to this. video. No, 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 I know. Listen to this, Paul. Tell him. Dude, what? it we have a tornado warning here. Do you? Yeah, and I didn't think it. Oh, oh, you told me to tell Paul because he just got a hard on. <laughs> <laughs> look at look at look at I'll check my weather right now. See that shit's coming this way. That's the video of Paul that the guy sent me. Oh wow. The, the, that there's a that much of the road isn't cleared and the water's so bad. I had it go completely around my house because I, I live in back roads and there's a lot of rivers. The rivers are completely covered. There was water up to the nose of my car or my really? truck. Yeah, it's that bad outside. I got home. Thank God my basement already has water in it. But it's really? Basically, no, but yeah, but that's no, it's not. It's from just the, uh, the concrete and the foundations. There's, sometimes there's like little bubbles in it. So like a little water seeps through, but the water never gets that high. To where it reaches that level my whole side of my property you can't even see my grass there's got to be about two feet of water from going all the way out to the road are you gonna have a flood oh, in the you're gonna have a flood in the morning um I, I before i got on the podcast I, I came home and i walked around my entire house to make sure because i was like there's got to be something flooded no i mean no no i mean the basement you think it's gonna be flooded in the morning no because it's not i have a sub pump and the basement, there's nothing really in there. And the one time it really leaked was because a pipe broke. I've never had a leak in there besides that pipe. Um, but I got it fixed when I first moved in. But I've never, well, I'm 39. I've never seen rain like this in my entire life. And I, I texted Fuad. I'm like, hey, bro. And I'm like, here you go. He's going to think this is another bullshit sister. You know, fucking make up a reason to be late to the podcast. And I'm like, 
this is going to suck because I was like, it's going to take me forever to get home. Is and this uh, after effects of that hurricane? I, dude, I, I didn't, I thought it, they just called for rain and then watch Alexa, read my notifications on volume seven. Can't hear. You can't hear. What's that hurricane called, Paul? Ida. Hurricane Ida. Did it hit already? Yeah. U.S. Yeah, National yeah. Weather Service has issued a flash flood warning. Oh my Chicago God! Region. The devastation is must be crazy. I think Louisiana's out of power. I think. Huh? Isn't like half of Louisiana out of power still? Looks like. Yeah. So I didn't know that we were getting hit from that tornado. They just called for like a thunderstorms, and then th today it went from thunderstorms to a fucking tornado warning. Really? Yeah. We had a tornado around here a couple weeks ago too. No, we didn't. Yeah, we did. Fuad and Leamington. Oh, fucking Paul just likes to make stuff up. If Fuad doesn't read the news, we had a tornado here. Yeah, a couple I don't weeks read ago. the news. No, I'm not like you I don't, don't read just, local news. I don't just believe everything. Like, oh, there's you a tornado. Watch U.S. news. You don't Is there, watch. Listen, every news. fucking asshole has a phone. Is there any pictures of this tornado? Yeah. Where? <laughs> on Facebook, I saw some. <laughs> You're a liar. Paul, does it turn, I'm not. Paul, does it turn you on to look at like crazy weather? No, but I like to stay informed. Not turn you on, but do you get like super excited? Paul, are you excited? I like to stay informed, guy. This so, okay, well, this is so what you're looking at is what I drove home in. This is the hurricane, and this is Mississippi. That's Holy how much shit. water it is. It's insane. They're, so, they said they're expecting us to get five or more inches of rain. That's how much rain. Listen, I have to ask you a more important question. Why when am I so sexy? When you have a bottle like this, I've been battling with this for the last uh, four four days. I know what you're gonna ask. Do you drink out of the fucking nipple? No. Or do you take the no. top off? I take, I take the, the top, top off, off like a real man. Right? That's what I do. I sometimes, like but sometimes I get. You want to suck on a nipple? And and fucking <laughs> be a baby and fucking go back to your mommy. Like, I'm not sucking on no fucking nipple like that. Like like a fucking baby. That's insane. Sometimes I like suck on a nipple. <laughs> oh, you do? I'll say this: if I'm <laughs> super, if I'm super thirsty. I'll take it and like suck squeeze on it. it and squeeze as much as I can into my mouth at one time. Why would you just take the top right off it and sometimes, sometimes, sometimes I just I, I want it that fast. I just want to uh, flip it and fucking. Sometimes you're too lazy to take the top off, so you just flip it open. Yeah, and you can give yourself like a good. I've been wondering about it because I I bought this case of water because I was just in a rush, and I when I got home I realized I had the nipple on it. So I've been for the last three days I've been drinking these bottles of water, and I'm like I wonder what the guys do because I've been going back and forth. Between drinking out of the nipple and taking the top off. It's all about where you are, time and place, what you're doing, how fast you want it, how thirsty you are. And That's right. That's right. Okay, good. I never use a nipple. Never use a nipple? Shocker, never. Paul. What do you use? <laughs> it's about my pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't done a bro chat, which is us three in like forever. This is the, Italian, this you, is, this is the Italian chat. Yeah. We just, need, we, just yeah. Need Nick. we just need Nick. Yeah. yeah where is he? I don't know. I miss. I miss like Nick. a hiatus. He's uh, people keep asking. I don't. I don't think they got the news. Nick decided that he was going to take a break from the podcast until he did the Arnold and the Olympia and got <laughs> it out of the way, and then he could relax and do the show. Why well, was this? Does your show make him that nervous? I'm going to call him a pussy. Nick, I, something. I could, pussy. I could see. I could see it. I could see just wanting to be left I alone. No, I, I, I do, too, but that doesn't mean I, I can't make fun of him. No, of course. Sure. Yeah, we can make fun of him because I mean, like. <laughs> No, because like everybody else is like, you know, Ian's doing it, Nathan's doing it, James did, but I can also see like being somebody who's like, you know what? I don't want any distractions. I don't want yeah. to be, I don't want to be bothered. I don't want anybody messaging me. I don't want to be part of anything. I just want to focus. But I used to compete. I used to work midnights on purpose. So that way I wouldn't have to talk to anybody. I think I the level, I think, I think the level of importance of this show for Nick, I don't want to say it's greater than everybody else's, but he's kind of put himself in a position where. Yes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, obviously, yeah. the, obviously, the show is just important to Ian as it is to Nick. I'm not saying it's not. Yeah. No, but the self, like, um, respect, which which he puts himself like on a level where like I'm the motherfucker that nobody's gonna beat, and that's great. But well, plus, that's plus, I think he's also younger, so I think he still has a lot to prove. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think all of that's probably weighing into weighing on him, not in a negative way, but it's probably all factors into his decision of like I'm just gonna focus. Yeah. So I think it's good, man. I think, you know, I was, I was sad that he wasn't going to be on the show, but I think it's cool that he's like, you know what? I don't care about anything. This is, I just yeah. care about this fucking one thing. He's yeah. laser focused. 
that kind of thing makes me envious. And the funny thing about Nick is I think because when he's on the show, he's so nonchalant. I don't think people realize he has like that Dorian Yates, like drive. Which, yeah. Because you know, when you talk to him, when, when I actually ask him specific questions, like he goes to bed at a certain time, he never fucking misses a meal time. Like his, his meals are timed. Like everything's. Yes. His day is planned yeah. from start to finish. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he gets up at the same time every day. Like that's Dorian Yates type shit. But you know what? Mm-hmm. You know what? I'll say this. I think, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. When you're a younger pro bodybuilder, and I say pro bodybuilder because I think it, it, it it's different when you're a pro than you're an amateur. And people might not like that. But I, I think that when you're a pro and you do it for a job, it has a different taste than it does when you're an amateur. That being said, I think at some point in our career, we can all look back and say we kind of had that mentality. But I think the older that I got and the more that I learned like business side of bodybuilding and like making money and how to like grow my own brand, you kind of start, I'm not saying slacking in those departments, but you kind of start meshing things together to make bodybuilding and business become, you know, to life. And it's hard to do when you're just in a fucking shell all the time like that. Can I I think at some point, everybody realized at a certain age, like, oh, I got to start doing more than just being a bodybuilder. Well, uh, can I just say a couple things about that? So I think Nick already is because Nick, surprisingly, because even though Nick is, you know, day is planned from eight start to finish, like you said, he is also doing the YouTube thing, which a lot of bodybuilders don't do. He's out there shooting, shooting videos every day or every other day. I don't day. do that. I don't do that now. That's what I'm saying. So like that takes a lot of fucking effort. So, yeah. uh, you know, he's doing that. So he is doing, he is doing some business stuff. That's important for building your brand. Um, when you have a good videographer, it changes the game for you. Well, yeah, I mean, he's not out there like editing and shit all himself, but still he's out there doing it. So yeah. I think um, if a guy comes in, like if Nick comes into the IFBB and he takes third at the New York pro versus first. Changes the whole fucking does, game. Does his yep. trajectory change completely For or sure. does his, or does his tra- trajectory still keep going on? Fire? You know where I got, you know where I think we're going to see where the trajectory goes for Nick and like, Nick watches these and he knows that we love him. It's all going to be dependent upon his placing at the O and what happens after that. But I do, but I do think one thing though, um, guy, I think Nick is much more sure of himself than I was when I was coming up. Absolutely. I would have never said, I would have never said the words he's saying to anyone. And it's not fake either. He no, no, he's it. not. Yeah, he's not faking it. So I would right, say but it's not, it's not arrogant though. He no, just no, has ever, confidence in himself. You, you know, when people say, you got to fucking act like a champion. You got to, you got to, tra- in your mind, when you train, you got to train like you're number one. I never trained in my head like I was going to win. I always trained like there was somebody there that was training harder than me and I had to beat them. So I always trained like I was in second place. Yeah. yeah. That's how I trained because that's what fucking, like, Kyrie <laughs> would always tell me, you got to fucking, tr- you got to think like you're going to fucking win. You got to act like a champion. You're going to win. And every time I tried to have that mentality, I wouldn't win. You know, it's funny. We've, and it I- drove I- me nuts. I think I've had this conversation on this show like fucking a handful, a dozen times, maybe. The the most makers dozen, bitch. The most the (laughs) most interesting thing about this conversation, and no one will ever be able to answer it, is what comes first, the chicken or the egg? Does the confidence build the physique, or does the physique build the confidence? Interesting, but right, like Nick, like is Nick's physique the way it looks? Obviously, because of genetics, but is that perfection in his daily life? Because he has the confidence, or is the confidence built because he's so regimented? For Nick, at least, I think it's the confidence that built for him. But it's funny. It's, it's, so right, but, it but it's funny to me though. Like if you think of like think of Phil Heath, does Phil Heath have Phil Heath's mentality if he doesn't have those genetics? I'm gonna say this. Just hear me yeah, out. I don't know. Right? It's hard to tell. Yeah, yeah. Hold on. Hear me out. Ready for this? Because I don't know if you guys are the same. I'm ready. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I don't realize I do it until you answer me. (laughs) (laughs) So when I was younger in college and like, so a lot of people know and people people don't know. I met PJ in 2000 when I was in college because PJ lived in the same town that I went to college. in. Mm -hmm. Um, So when I, when me and PJ were training, me and PJ trained together for years. That's when I was like a middleweight, like a small fucking skinny pussy. Yeah. And I would walk around, like I would go to the fucking uh, mall to get my hair cut in a stringer because I was, I'm in my head, I was like, I'm fucking Jack. And yeah. I'm, I had more confidence when I was a skinny fucking pussy. 
<laughs> I did as a pro bodybuilder. Yeah. So exactly. I think I actually had, I think I was like Nick at one point in my own head, but no. then I see guys like Nick and I'm like, God, it's different. Nick. No, what you're describing is different. I'll tell you why. So like you, when I started, I had the fucking Gino haircut and the fucking, <laughs> I, I used to listen, you can, some tips. you can barely catch me in the gym in a tank top now, unless I'm fucking two weeks out from a show. Yeah. Hey, look at me. Look what I used to yeah. Do. So, so what I'm saying is back then though, when I was 20, 21, I just started working out at like tank top every day. Oh, you never had sleeves. Yeah. I never had sleeves. Everybody look at me. That's different than Nick though. Yeah. What we were doing was almost like, <laughs> we were trying to get recognized where Nick doesn't have to do that. We're almost pretending we had yes. confidence yes. where Nick actually fucking has the, yeah. like, it's different, right? Nick's not yeah. trying to be something. He's just, he has that confidence. It's, yeah. I think, I, I think genuine confidence is different than trying to have confidence. Yeah. Where do you yeah. think like Nick learned that mental strength that he has? It or, sounds like it but, sounds like it comes from his mom and dad. Yeah, really, eh? I mean, when he talks about his mom and dad, it sounds like they've always encouraged him. And That's made the him biggest feel. influence in life, it seems like. But, yeah, but, yeah, then, but, the, but this goes back to the conversation, Paul. Does the confidence also come from the fact that he's a genetic freak? I don't know. I um, think that I, I think if Nick didn't look the way he did, he wouldn't think the way he thinks. They go hand in hand, I think. That's what I think, too, because people say, well, you I don't think when Nick was younger and coming up, he thought the way he thinks now. Yeah, he, said, he says otherwise. Really? I don't, I think, I don't, I think, I think. Well, he's only been up and coming when for a couple you of years. Hit a, when you hit a certain peak or stride in your amateur career, I think certain things start to click in your head. Like when I first competed and I fucking won, I wasn't like, I want to be Mr. Olympia. Cause I didn't fucking like, I, I don't think when you first start that everybody's like goal, like Nick was like, when I started my goal is to be Mr. Olympia. That was his goal. But I don't think he had the confidence that young to be like, I'm going to be Mr. Olympia. From the Because when we of, all start, we well, all fucking have the goal of wanting to be Mr. Up. Not yeah. me. What was your goal? I just wanted to turn pro. Yeah. I didn't even want to turn pro. I was like, I'm going to do one show for the fuck of it. And then when I did well, I'm like, oh, okay, I'll do another one. And then when but I did after well. You won, after you I, won your first show, what did you think then? When I won the second show, I'm like, okay, I think I'm going to do something. And then what was your goal, though, to be just, just a pro? Just or to be turn, a great just pro? Turn, I, you know, the highest I ever thought in my mind? There was one prep probably like in 2010 and I was like, I'm going to fucking be second or third at the Arnold this year. I think I might have said in, you know, when you're at the gym and you're all pumped up after a set, yeah. I think I might have said once in my career, I'm going to win the Arnold this year. You probably think, said it more than once. I think I may have, I can recall saying it. <laughs> I can recall saying it once. <laughs> I can recall saying it once and meaning it. Right. I can recall a few times. Um, <laughs> <laughs> probably, probably when I was younger, though, not yeah. not, not recently. I, when I won my first show, I thought I was going to be something special. I got, yeah. my, my, I got, you know, I thought, uh, you know, this is it. Like, I got put in a magazine right away. I won my first show. I was like 19. I thought, hey, I'm going to be something with this. Well, you were still in the show. Of course you were going to be somebody. <laughs> and then my next show, I went against, remember I told you the story, I had Greg Kovacs and Freddie Antiwi. Yeah. And then I was like, yeah, I'm in the rock sport. <laughs> but i can say this when nick talks i actually am like good for fucking you bro like yeah. good yeah like, I, like when like when he says that shit i'm like good fucking say it again and because, say it loud because you, yeah. know what, you know and that goes back to what we're talking about there's a difference between me and you running around in tank tops and trying to be fucking hard and nick who has trying actually, to be hard fucking speak for well, yourself well come on anyway <laughs> but no but nick has a genuine confidence and that's why i don't think you can be mad at him for it no, it's he not, believes in he's not he's not trying to masquerade as somebody with confidence he's yeah. really like look this is what i want to do this is what i'm doing my, right, my right. dad actually said something today that he's never said to me before because he caught we were talking on the way to the gym and uh he was like man i gotta get back into the fucking gym and i was like what do you mean you gotta get back he's like i just don't like how i feel i'm like dad i go you're fucking retired now i go how are you making excuses for not going to the gym he goes, well, you know, now that I'm retired, I wake up in the morning and I like to have my coffee and read the paper. And I go, okay. So I go eat breakfast and then wait a little bit and go at, at lunch. No, I want to go in the morning. I, I like to get up at four or five o'clock and then just go. And I'm like, then do it. He's like, I got to, I got to get back in the swing of things. And he's like, next week is I go, dad, we can sit on the phone and make fucking excuses every day as to why you don't want to go to the gym. I'm like, you have the fucking time. I go, you're retired. I go, go to the fucking gym. I go, stop making excuses. I said, I, you don't think I can make an excuse every day? And he, he goes, that's the difference between you. He goes, and 
99% of everybody else. He goes, you have never made an excuse to not get the job done. He goes, and I applaud you for that. He goes, because not a lot of people do that. Well, your dad, we he, goes, you always, he goes, you always find a way to get it done, regardless of what it is. And I'm like, well, that came from you and mom. So fucking get to the gym. Yeah. Is he I, 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 I didn't, I, that wasn't like, yeah, part of it's taught and part of it's learned. But I, I taught myself, but I learned it from my parents. I've seen my dad at fucking bankrupt, losing his business, fucking damn near my parents losing their house, They're coming back and like nothing fucking happened and didn't miss a, a practice of mine or my brothers or my sisters and didn't miss a fucking, he just always found the fucking way to get it done. And I'm like, you did that when we were kids. Do it and like the fucking gym, stop. Did he just yeah. retire, guy? Hmm? Did he just retire? He retired in March of last year. He's probably just going through a transition, though. You know, when yeah, getting, well, when... you know, you know what I told him? I said, you got to stop trying to fit your entire retirement into fucking one day, one week. He like tries to do, he goes fishing every day and goes hunting every day and goes to the range every day. And goes, I'm like, dad, you don't have to do, ev- you just retired a year ago. You're not going to die tomorrow. So like, take it easy, enjoy your retirement and fucking go to the gym at five o'clock. And I go, go for an hour. I go, but Can don't I- sit Huh? Can I ask you, since we're on the topic, how is your retirement going? Yeah. Um. Honestly, man, I, it, it's. I. I honestly thought I was going to have a tough time transitioning, but the only thing I can say is that I'm. I just. I'm having like more fun in the gym. Man, you know, I. It's would... the weirdest thing. Like, I'm actually training heavy. I haven't fucking let up off the gas, but when I'm in the gym, it's like that. That fucking weight on my shoulders of like having to compete and be better and do better and isn't there. It's like now I could just be better for me. I'm going to say this and I don't want to mean to be a downer, but give it a year. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure I'm going to, I'm sure I already know there's going to come a point where the fucking year goes back a little bit. No, 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 no. Yeah. yeah because. Are you talking about I, getting I, the want to be back? Listen, I haven't even officially retired. I pretty much retired, but I haven't officially retired and it's fucking devastating at times. Like my oh. life, my life is, even though I transitioned, like everybody on the outside looking in, everyone's like, Oh, you're fine. You know, you got the podcast, you got a supplement company, you got, but when you have a passion for something and it's your whole life, like, you know, guy, and all of a sudden you can't do it anymore. It's fucking hell, man. Like That's there, why- there have been, there have been days where I've been like on the phone with family, like crying. Like, what the fuck am I going to do with my life? They're like, you're already doing it. They're like, yeah. you got a podcast, you got a business, you got your fucking supplement company. And I'm like, it's not the same shit. I will say this. When people listen to my speech and they hear my emotion, my obviously my emotion was backed by John and, 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 and some of the things on stage and, you know, with the Dallas stuff and the Luke and the, and the John, like that stuff obviously affected my speech. But my emotion on stage People don't realize that since 2003, right? And I'm not speaking for me, but I'm speaking for everybody. Bodybuilding has been the only consistent, constant thing in my life for 18 years. I have bodybuilding. I don't have a relationship. I don't have kids. I don't have this. I don't have that. But the one thing that always remained the same in my life for 18 fucking years was bodybuilding. And to take that away at the blink of a fucking eye, that's where the emotion comes from. Because people can sit there and look at me and go, he's an asshole. He fucking screams at kids. He curses. He does this. But at the end of the day, my whole career, all I wanted to do was train my balls off and show people that sometimes you can fucking accomplish whatever the fuck you want to do if you just fucking work and you work harder than anybody. And when that part of your life stops it takes your breath away it, it it that night was probably the worst night of my life is is gr- gratifying as it was to see that whole fucking auditorium standing up and clapping and see the response i got from everybody it's the last time i'm going to get that response it's the last time anybody's going to stand up and cheer it's the last time i'm going to hit a shot on stage it's the last time i'm going to pose some music it's the last time i'm going to hear a judge call my number it's the last time i'm going to be have my hand raised it as be, first place. It won't huh? be the last. It won't be the last time you post to music. The last time what? It won't be Why? the last time you post to music. Why are we gonna? Like, is there a bet? I'm gonna lose. You do it the gym all the time. No, I'm telling you, man. There are times. 
especially now that I got my own gym by myself. <laughs> there are times I pose. Just no, no, for, no, no, no. Just, just for the fuck of it. I do that still. I'm I know, totally I, I know what you mean on stage. To, to, I know what you mean to an audience. I know that, yeah. but it's weird. It's weird because sometimes I'll I'll be posing and I'll catch myself posing. And I'm like, why are you posing? You're not because gonna... <laughs> yeah. because that because it's it's part of you. I know yeah. that. I know. I that. still do it. It's, yeah, I haven't competed in thirty years. I haven't yeah. seen you, Paul. I haven't seen you pose. You must. You know, no one's. You, yeah, you do it. No Those one. Rare moments. Those rare moments when I'm alone at uh, when he's walking by a car when he's walking by a shiny car door he's like <laughs> yeah oh yeah I might hit a front last spread most muscular we'll see anyway this has gone uh, a little no, bit but I think this is good because I think a lot of people need to hear this because I don't think a lot of people talk about this stuff I don't think anybody you know I when I so I did a podcast with Dorian Yates and Dorian talked about the year or two post retirement and how hard it was for him and how he drank most of it away and partied most of it away because of how hard it was. And I'm like, I don't know what this guy's fucking guy's talking about, mm. but I did know what he was talking about. I just haven't, I haven't done the partying and drinking, but it, I don't think and people, I don't, you know, I tried to talk to my brother about it. I don't think anybody will ever understand unless they've been in the same position. And I don't necessarily mean bodybuilding itself. I mean, unless there's something you've devoted your life to whatever genre it's, whatever genre it is, let's say you owned a business. Let's say you, uh, whatever, you, whatever it is you tried to do and you put your entire life and heart and in, into it. When, like you said, when someone takes it away or time takes it away or just not available to you anymore, there is a fucking void that is almost impossible to fill. Because people, I've had people try to give me an analogy based off of them. Like, oh, when I had my job and, I, and I'm like, yeah, your not, job yeah. wasn't your life. It's right. different. I didn't work a nine to five. I worked right. the fucking time I woke up to the time I went to bed, 365, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. My, like when people go, oh, I don't take my job home with me. I don't take work. When you're a fucking pro bodybuilder, yeah, yeah. your job is all day fucking long. Well, you're mm -hmm. thinking about it, dude. I, it, it's like, I, I think I said this in one of my Q and A's. It's like, there's a fucking clock back here. Yep. Even when you got stuff going on up here that you're actually mm -hmm. focused on talking to people, there's another little clock back here going, Hey, asshole, it's time to eat. Hey, yeah. you got, ha you got half an hour to go. You got to make a meal. Hey, uh, and another hour, you got to go to the gym and it, all the while you got other stuff going on in the front, but there's yeah. this bodybuilding clock back here. That's constantly fucking with you telling you, go get your meal in, go get to sleep, go, go to the and, gym, go to. And I'm and sure it, you've had the people go, Oh, I've had people close friends go, Oh, well, you don't have a real job. So it doesn't matter. And I'm like, Oh, food, I love do that. what I do for a week. <laughs> and then tell me, I don't have a fucking real job. No, well, yeah. let's, let's be honest. So, so I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm going to tell people the truth. Go ahead. I'm just rinsing my mouth. So, so the truth of the matter is when I had, when I was, and I just said this to Paul the other day, when I had nothing to worry about, but bodybuilding, when I was a full-time bodybuilder and I had a contract, life was fucking easy. It was a full-time job. Like I still had to like, focus on it all day long food and training and all that right. but it was fucking easy like because mm -hmm. in between the meals i'm just sitting on my fucking ass watching tv paul just said to me, hey guy paul says to me the other day he goes you were the best tv watcher ever <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. he's like he's like you used to watch 18 hours of tv a day <laughs> he, did. He, did. He, did. <laughs> he would only leave his house to train that was about it I, I didn't, I didn't leave the house. Listen, as a full-time bodybuilder, I did not leave the house unless it was to go to the fucking grocery store, <laughs> go to the gym or go for a tan. You were, you know, they talk about like, you, you know, you can't burn calories if you want to get big. Like yeah. you got to conserve yeah. your calories. That's you're the epitome of that. You I'm probably like, burned like 10 calories a day, except for your workouts. <laughs> I'm not getting off the fucking couch. I say, I can't burn my, I can't yeah. waste my, I can't waste my food. You're uh, costly a calorie surplus. Were you really like that? Yeah. Oh Yeah. <laughs> guy i listen i can say it now because my life is so busy now that i can i don't say have to you were a fucking lazy I was, for fucking but, I, but, I, but i wasn't lazy i was focused on bodybuilding and nothing else to me mattered so i'm like as long as i'm eating my food as long as i'm training as long as i'm focused on bodybuilding i don't give a fuck about anything else and i did i watched a lot of fucking tv so this and, is where i think i wasn't a good bodybuilder well you did a lot I, of other shit i never sat on my couch and did nothing and i think that was my thing that made me the most successful, but I also think it's the thing that hurt me the most in bodybuilding. 
Well, but we got to remember though, we had a little bit two different paths. Like yeah. but, when you when you're a two twelve guy, you can only you you have. A, and listen, I'm not knocking you, but you have a cap on how big you can get. Oh, don't you nod your head? Yeah, I'll come. I'll come. No, it's true. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 just, no, but but for I'm me, not saying that you're not big. I'm just like, saying that you can't get too big. I'm not that big, so it doesn't matter. I don't no, but that. like what I'm, the point I'm trying to make is for me, like there was never big enough. Right. Yeah. Like in my era was Ronnie Coleman's era, Jay Cutler's era, like yeah. Kai Green's era. Like I was 258 pounds on stage. It was still too small. Yeah. So like I all I cared about was I mean, eating and getting big. I, I, yes, I agree with you because it's not open. But when you're a 212 guy and you've never reached the 212 limit, I still was chasing guys. That was like, I got to be fucking bigger. Yeah. If you're getting bigger, I, then, yeah, we're in the same boat. If you mm-hmm. have to get bigger. I mean, you yeah. probably don't remember. But at one point, I I competed in open shows and didn't do. I took fifth at one yeah, show, and sixth at another, yeah. and I was fucking I beating guys that were two seventy. I remember yeah. that. So there was a time where I was actually big big enough to do okay at an open show. But that's not the point. I'm not. That wasn't the point I was trying to make. No, but what I'm saying is, is that as much as you were you were trying to chase Ronnie, I was trying to chase Kevin English and Flex, and to me, those were like the Ronnie Coleman's in my class. No, no, I understand that, but. When but there was already, no limit when you're already weighing in at 210 yes. it's like how much bigger can i get right yeah. whereas yeah. for me i'm like okay i'm 258 the sky's the limit these guys are yeah. fucking 280 like, yeah like i can't yeah. so that's why it, it and i was a little i'll be honest i was a little lazy i was like hey i got a contract i'm fucking i'm living it up i was living the dream yeah, yeah. You're living, what you're supposed to be doing <laughs> I, had a, I had a supplement contract i was fucking doing all right i'm like fucking, yeah. you know i mean who cares right i, I was jealous <laughs> <laughs> my, my wife my wife was jealous she would go to work yeah. and she would come home and i'd still be on the couch <laughs> she'd be like did, get the fuck out of here she'd be like did you even fucking move today i'd be like well i got up and cooked food and i came you're back like, to the couch you're like where you been all day she would come this. home i'd be like where do you go every day what are you doing like, <laughs> i remember watching a battle for this is this kind of changed my mindset a little bit I remember watching the battle for the Olympia. Who the fuck was it? Somebody, one of the, ah, who was it? They were cooking and they were saying that they don't like anybody to do their cooking for them or make their food or do this because that's part of the bodybuilding process and it's time consuming and they enjoy it. So I, until the, you know, food prep companies weren't really, that they weren't thing. a thing. They weren't yeah. a thing back in like the past couple of years, they became a thing. But back yeah. when we were coming up, they weren't a thing. You got to make your own food. And even when they were, they were way too expensive. Yeah. yeah. Nobody fucking bought them. Yeah. yeah. So I never had anybody, even when I was married, my wife never cooked my food. I never had anybody cook my shit. I wasn't that lazy. You wouldn't have anybody food. You always want to cook your own stuff. I always cook my own stuff. That's I know always, a lot of people yeah. that let the other people cook. And I'm like, ah, back when I was younger, like, I remember one time my mom, my mom, my mother made me chicken. And I was like, it's, it was before my show. And I'm like, you got to make it plain. I'm like, don't put anything on it. Yeah. So I come back and I go, Ma, what's on this? She goes, Oh, there's a little salt, pepper, and olive oil. There's nothing on it. And I go, <laughs> should tell you. What do you mean there's nothing on it? You just think <laughs> three things you put on it. I'm surprised she didn't make chicken parmesan on it. I was like, So, like, I, that's why I just, I was like, nobody's cooking my shit again. No, you're not Italian. Dude, that when I was uh, when I used to compete, well, my first show when I when my mom still I still with my mom, she uh, she knew I eat, you know I eat a lot of chicken. So on Sundays, you know, you get together for family dinner. So she'd be like, "I want me to send your dad for some KFC for you, get some chicken for you." Jeez, yeah. like, oh, <laughs> that just blew my mind. <laughs> yeah, man, my mom uses the olive oil, always the olive. Oil. I'd be like, "Is it?" I I would eat it. And I'd be like, "This tastes too good." Some, this, this tastes. She's like, "Is this salt and pepper?" I'm like, "What else?" <laughs> well, a little bit of lemon. I'm like, just a little bit. What else? Like a half a teaspoon of olive oil. Like, <laughs> fuck your fucking mom. Like, what the fuck? It's good for you. Yeah, My yeah. grandparents, like Italians, used to have like big Sunday dinners. Yeah. So I'd be dieting, and my grandparents be like, Gaetano, like, mind you, like, and I'm like, yeah. I, can't, I can't. They just, just a bite, and I'm like, I, I <laughs> what's one bite? And I'm like, Nan, I can't. I, know. I can't. Like, I'm like, like old school Italian grandparents, are like, yeah. what do you mean you can't eat? Yeah, yeah, like, just dude, eat, guy, eat. At, Italian, <laughs> on, honestly, <laughs> when it comes to food, Italians and Arabs are actually very close. We do yeah, the same. Very. We do the same thing. The big Sunday dinner, and my mom, for the first ten years of my career, didn't understand that I couldn't have Sunday because we have the fa- the whole family gets together on Sunday, and we all sit around and have dinner. And for ten years, every time I prepped, I stopped coming home on Sundays. Is there? So, <laughs> 
Yeah. They're like, why don't you come home? I'm like, because I can't sit around and watch you guys eat a feast every Sunday while I'm fucking dying. <laughs> Out of everybody in my life, I used to do this too, actually, when I was younger. Before my preps, I would call my mom and be like, hey, I start prep tomorrow, so I'm just going to apologize now. Yeah, uh, I did that too. Because, because during my preps, for some reason, and mom, I you're, you're my angel. I love you to death. <laughs> my mom would fucking be the only human that could literally get under my skin and make me want to fucking freak the fuck out. <laughs> like, like just the dumb, I would always eat. Like if I was home, I would eat. And she always be like, geez, did you even taste it? You ate it so fast. And I'm like, why would you fucking matter? You've been saying the same thing for 10 years. Let me eat my fucking food and shut up. Like stop with the fucking comments. <laughs> like it would always be like shit like that. That like would drive me fucking crazy. So I would just, after, <laughs> So I would just then after like I learned that she was my like fucking trigger before my shows, I'd be like, hey, I'm gonna apologize now for the next 16 weeks. Yeah. So anything I say, just take it for the greatest. I was the opposite. I apologized because I never came home. Oh no, my mom would set me the fuck because my mom is like all about everybody's every guy you gotta check in every few days. And for fucking there would be 12 weeks at a time where I might see her like three times. And she would hate my guts. She'd be like, When's your diet? When's your diet done? When are you done okay, dieting? When are you done dieting? Are you going to come home for dinner when you're done dieting? And it'd be like, <laughs> yeah, I felt horrible for her, but yeah. fuck, I, I couldn't handle it. I couldn't handle hanging out. She, my mom, you guys are probably the same way as Italians. My mom always has food in the fridge. Oh, yeah. There's always something delicious in the and fucking if, especially fridge. If, especially if your mother's a good cook. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Dude, There's my mom's so, my, mom, my mom's old school. She never had a job. She fucking made everything from scratch our yeah. whole lives. That's awesome. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, every, should be. Every time I fucking came home, there was something in the fridge. So when I was dieting, I'm like, I'm just not coming. Yeah. I'm like, you know, it's weird. Even my mom's fruit tasted better. Because <laughs> you know, like, right? they would go to the grocery, they go to the market, and they would get like the freshest fucking fruit. They would check yeah. it all. They would squeeze it, bring it all. Yeah. My mom would Shake wash it. it, wash it all night. Nice, it- we go to the store like this. Yeah. Looks good. <laughs> yeah. You take it home, it lasts a day. Man, this the last good. time, listen, the last time I went to my mom's for breakfast, it was like three days ago. I get there. She's like, are you going to have breakfast with me? I'm like, ah, mom, I'm trying to diet a little bit. She's like, ah, don't worry. I'll make you some eggs. I'm like, okay. So she makes me some <laughs> eggs. So I have some eggs with my mom. And she brings out, it's just, everything's better. She brings out a bowl of watermelon and it's all cut up into little small cubes. And I'm like, it's because they're cut into cubes. It tastes good. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, it, it's made with love. You could tell she peeled it. She chopped it all up. She knew I was coming over. People don't think that's a real ingredient, but it is. It's a total real ingredient. It's a yeah. very, it's a the real love, ingredient. The love, you could feel the love in the food. Yeah. Your, your wife could do the same thing. You'd be like, ah. ah she, she doesn't care about me. <laughs> the cubes would be all jagged and shit. Yeah. <laughs> you'd be like, ah. She knows what the Canadian boy. <laughs> There'd still be some watermelon peel on some of it. She just doesn't really fat. She doesn't even chisel care. <laughs> Are you cut into cubes where you can't take the seeds out? <laughs> yeah. like crazy bitch. You would buy the watermelon is still a little mushy inside. And shit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, totally. Hey, ready for this? Yeah. Here's a story for you. I almost killed my mother. Killed her. Almost killed her. Three years ago, she made. I was home butchering deer. It was during deer season. My dad was like, hey, I got like 30 deer. Your brother is fucking working. Can you come over and help me butcher? I'm like, yes. Bro, fucking early, like seven o'clock in the morning. No, I actually drove the night before. How'd you get over. thirty deer? You killed yeah, like thirty a deer. Jesus no, 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 no. My, so we hunt, but in my parents' garage, like starting September thirteenth, whatever, uh, two weeks. Yeah. Deer season opens up. Yeah. People go and hunt. Oh, and they bring their, their dad. deer, and they'll drop their deer off, and we we process it and package it, oh. and they pay us, and they pick it up. Yeah, yeah. So oh. like last year, I think my dad, like my dad, my brother, me, cut over five hundred deer. Really. Oh, for, I'll, head, when right? I go up, I'll take a video. It's insane. Yeah. Yeah. So I Jeez. butcher all day. And when you butcher in the garage, like it's one of those things, like when you get in a groove of cutting and you start flying, the last thing you want to do is fucking stop. Mm-hmm. Because if you stop, then it's like, you got to take your fucking apron off, your gloves off, put the knives away, take your shoes off, go inside, sit down, eat a meal. And then you got to get back into the groove again. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I just cut right through. It was dinner time. My mom was like, oh, I made a salad. Go eat the salad and the food will be out in two minutes. So she made a nice salad with fucking olives on it. I'm fucking eating it. You know how you eat a salad. You just fucking dig in. I'm yeah. digging. I'm starving. Yeah. She fucking, this fucking lady, my mother, puts pitted olives oh. in the fucking salad. Oh. And I'm fucking like three bites oh. in and take a bite and Broke blow two. my fucking molar right in half. 
Oh and my it fucking God. drops right out of my mouth. And I go, hey, mom. There's no love in that salad. I go, did you just put fucking pitted olives? She goes, yeah, they're pitted. Why? I go, you didn't think you should preface with don't go pound it. She, you always yell at me like, you don't, do you, do you even taste your food? You eat it so fast. So you put pitted olives in a salad and don't tell me to fucking enter with caution. I should put rocks in a salad too. I had to get, I had to get a root canal. Oh, I had to get my, tooth, I had to get my, I had to get my, my tooth. Then I had a root canal because I tried saving the tooth. Couldn't save the tooth. <laughs> then I had to get the fucking tooth pulled. Then I had to get an implant put in. Then they had to drill into my jaw and screw a tooth in. Oh, All because your mom didn't fuck. fucking take the seeds out of the olives. And I went, so my mom worked for an oral surgeon. So her boss did it. And I was like, you guys can send the bill to my mother. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, this is all due to her fucking shitty cooking. That's hilarious. <laughs> you ever get her back? What? You ever get her back? She's my mother. I could have lost all my teeth yeah. and I wouldn't do anything. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, you, you stuck her with the bill. It's good enough. No, I actually didn't. I actually paid the whole fucking thing. <laughs> You're a good son. <laughs> I want to ask you guys about some current current events and current things I've, I've kind of pulled out just to ask. What was that guy? Hmm? What is that, ginseng? This is a... Uh, no, it's that botanicals. It's that choice botanicals kratom because my I train legs. Oh, kratom. Yeah, I don't take it all the time, but I did heavy um, rack pulls yesterday. Or on, I'm sorry, on Monday. And then I did legs tonight and my, my knee and my back are just like a, in pain. So instead of taking Advil or yeah. like, well, I just take a shot of that and it literally takes the fucking edge away from the pain. So it's pure painkiller, not, not anti-inflammatory it's, it's, or anything? Uh, the way I describe it to people, and people, I, I, I'll describe it to you, and you're going to be like, that doesn't make any sense. But when you, if you actually take it, it does. It's almost like a combination of like an Adderall, Advil, and Xanax, because it calms you down, but it also gives you like crazy focus, but it also helps with pain. But it's one of the things like you can take it, and it'll relax you, and you can go to bed if you're in that mood. But if you're in like an up mood and you're ready to go, it'll fucking zone you into a workout like you've never. I, I think he sent me some it. of that. I never tried it, dude. Right. Yeah, oh, I, I gave the guy your address to send. Yeah, you I think I have some. If, I just never tried it. If if yeah. like tonight when you get done, open one of them up. One of the the little fucking green ones. The green green ones. Yeah. Green. Yeah, because they're all tech. They they say there's different strands, but the strand color just has to do with how well the leaf really is. So technically, they're all technically a green strand if you break it down. But they say there's red, white, and green. Um, but if you take one of those in 15 minutes, you will text me and go, bro, this is fucking amazing. All right. I gotta see where I can. I gotta see where I, I gotta see where I can. Yeah, they're awesome. I know I I put put it somewhere. Um, can somebody explain to me, uh, real quick, why did OnlyFans go anti-porn and then back to porn? I think because they, I honestly think they realized that they were monetizing so much off of that side of things due to the people that they had doing that stuff. That if they did that, they their whole platform probably would have been gone. Oh, yeah. so they just put it back so they don't lose. I'm it. not saying yeah. that, but I'm assuming yeah. that they I'm would assuming. have taken such a massive hit that yeah. they had to revisit the fucking. The, can I the just can I just thing. can I just say how lucky girls are nowadays? Oh, dude, it's insane. Like what back, in, well, think about it. Back in the day, like when we used to work at strip clubs, think about yeah. it. Girl would have to come in. She get fucking harassed by like 50 drunk guys. She had yeah. to fucking spread her box on a stage while guys threw toonie at her toonies at her fucking pussy. And then like, usually had to get usually, usually they're fucking wasted so they could fucking get through the night. Yeah. yeah. They're probably like drunk and coked yeah. up. Yeah. Now. And on top of all that, they only have a hundred guys they can earn money from or 300 guys, depending on the size of the club. Yeah. But I'm gonna, now, okay. True. All right. Let now, me, wait, wait a minute. Now they go on only fans. They don't have to fucking get drunk anymore. They don't have mm-hmm. to fucking talk to any dudes. Nobody touches them. Nobody harasses them. They don't have them. to get touched by don't leopard. Leave your house. And, leopard spotted hands don't touch them. Yeah. <laughs> and they have a, a fucking Millions. tens of thousands of people. Okay, that they can but fucking, let me ask uh, you a question. And I don't mean to fucking insult any girl, but if you're going to get butt hurt, then too bad. If I see an OnlyFans on a girl's page, yeah. I'm like, like if but, I'm single, I'm like, goodbye. <laughs> well, but that's the same thing. If- I don't like... I had a conversation about a girl about this exact topic. And I said, and you could, you guys can disagree, but I said, Mm. any guy that tells you he's okay with that is either a fucking liar or doesn't care about you. 
Not true. I'm like, because there's no man that would ever be 100% okay with that. Not true. See, I, as a man, I feel like there are things as a man that are for my eyes only if you're my girl. And if you're spreading your fucking skin canoe on fucking OnlyFans, <laughs> I don't want to fucking see you. I've heard that before. Your fuzzy taco? Yeah, your fucking <laughs> hatchet, your little hatchet wound. If, listen. <laughs> There's a difference between like, I know guys that have dated strippers. There's a difference with tolerating it and actually being like, yeah, I like it. It's okay. Some guys are different. Some guys are like, as long as she's making money, I don't care what she does. Some guys are just weird like that. I think I agree with you. The guy, I wouldn't be okay. Uh, man, I, uh, maybe you ca call me what you want. Like, I don't, I'm not a prude at all, but if you're my girl, there's parts of your body that I don't even want you posting on fucking social media. Cause they're yeah. I agree, but you I think call other guys me old school. You call me what it is. I don't need a girl who's got her thong fucking shoved in her balloon knot and bending over in the fucking in a picture on Instagram. I'm like, that's first of all, number one. Every my family's on social media, so I don't need my family seeing you fucking ass naked yeah. on on social media. And like, secondly, if you're my girl, like. I want to see your tits and ass when we're in the fucking bedroom and I'm fucking pile driving you through the fucking bed. Like, I don't need you fucking posting all over social media. Okay, yeah, wait. I hear you. I agree yeah. with you, but I just think other guys are more so whatever. They're okay you're, you come from a traditional family, so you're yes. going to probably think like that, right? A lot, of guys, a lot of guys don't care. Yeah, a lot of guys a lot of, don't. First of, all, first of all, a lot of guys really don't give a shit about the, the social media thing for sure. That I know. That I know. And then there's another level of guys that really don't give a shit about OnlyFans. You don't think a guy would care if his girl's on OnlyFans fucking playing with herself, all I'm, fucking boxed I'm, up with the camera? I'm 100% positive because I have a close friend who dated somebody who's a stripper for over a decade who did not give a shit. Yeah. And he loved her. I know who you're talking about. He, he was in love with her and everything. No. He just... I, okay. If he had a preference, I'm sure he'd be like, I'd rather her not be a stripper. No, no, he really did not. He was indifferent to it. He's like, he I don't care. Actually, of, in I fact, think. he would be like, yeah, she brings home a lot of money. Yeah. Okay, but what about, would, would he be okay if she was fingering herself on fucking OnlyFans? Well, probably. actually knowing him, he probably, he probably would be. Yeah, he probably would be. He's he's different. He's like, as long as she's not taking Like, right, like would, would it ever cross your mind that like, man, I wonder if one of my like friends like has fucking her. her he doesn't care. Like her, some guy, it turns, that turns her, on some guys. Yeah. He wouldn't care. Some guys like that fucking weird shit, man. I mean, listen, I, I there's I there's no whole bars in the bedroom, but like I don't want that. I'm not saying I'm not saying you're being a prude. I, no, I'm, like, just, I'm, makes, a, I'm listen, I'm the same way you are. I'm my wife is very conservative. She doesn't post like you know, she's done like a couple photo shoots back in the day, but she doesn't post any like scandalous photos or anything like that. She doesn't yeah. obviously doesn't do OnlyFans or strip or anything. That's what I like. That I like conservative women who aren't yeah. conservative when they don't have to be, but they are when they're in public. I like yeah, that. Yeah. Me too. So that that's cool. I can totally understand what you're saying. What I am saying though, is I think there's a lot of guys that just don't give a shit. Yeah. That, well, that honestly blows my mind because I'm like, man, yeah. like I, I can never, I can, I think I can, the, I think I know the stripping thing wouldn't be an issue that I wouldn't fucking really give a shit about. The, you don't give a shit about the stripping, but you give a shit about the only fans. That's so weird. Yeah, why? Right? Yeah, because that's more in your face and that's readily available. But it's and not in your face as much. No, like, wait, I get it. Is... I get it. I get no, it. So, no, no, you no, think, no. so you think the girl goes to a strip, strip club, capacity is 300 guys, it's usually the same 300 guys. Probably no one's going to ever see her. But if she's on OnlyFans, all my friends so, everywhere can fucking see her whenever they want. It's not oh, like, I like see. it's different between, it's different if my girl strips at fucking guys strip club in Jersey. Right. And those people are going to be the only people that see her stripping. Yeah. Whereas she's pretty much a porn star because she has it's access okay. on, on the fucking online. <laughs> I see. Okay. I don't know which I prefer. I can be to be the same. I would love actually. You know what? If you guys watch this, comment which which one you'd prefer over the other. Would if you, you had to, if you had to pick, if you had to if right. you had to pick, would you so rather stripper, date a stripper or, or somebody that had an OnlyFans that consisted of fucking you know finger bang? I actually know. <laughs> What if, what, if guy? what if it was what if there's no what if there's no finger bang what if, yeah. just what if it's just like rubbing titties and stuff <laughs> rubbing titties what are we fucking in who rubs titties <laughs> what are they doing they're doing this <laughs> no whatever i just like how he got so who you rubs know, titties? like explain what you really, I mean, when was the last grade? time you looked at a porn where the girl was like yeah who's <laughs> either in the porn or like yeah <laughs> Anyway, so okay, no wait. So if the girls do OnlyFans, 
let's say she's not touching herself. She's just nude. Just taking nude photos. Is that okay? Or is it the, the touching that makes it it's, bad? It's, it's, well, I wouldn't want my girl fucking doing any physical stuff. on an Let's only- say you meet a girl guy, you love her. She's amazing. And then she goes after like two months, she goes, look, I have an OnlyFans. I don't do anything. It's just photos of my bare ass and tits. I'll nope. be like, you have one minute to cancel subscription. <laughs> yeah, one minute really? to delete it. <laughs> what if she says yeah. no? Now, Guy, can I ask you a question? You know those two doors right there? No, you wouldn't. I'm honestly Let me ask you a question, Guy. What I'm saying, like, you fell in love with her. It's been three months. Everything's awesome. If I fell in love with her and she lied to me, didn't tell me she had an OnlyFans, that's issue number one. Number two, I'd be like, listen, you, you're telling me now. I'm telling you as a man, I'm not going to be able to fucking tolerate that. So you can either make it out. I, I, I'm not going to make you decide, but if she threw that on me after a couple months of being together, I feel like you can either stop or you can go. Okay. Yeah. Now what if, what about when you were 26? Would you answer the same way? Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. I All would right. probably at 26, I'd probably to tell you I, I wouldn't even date a stripper. Okay. Okay. So right now, guy, you're against any only fans and any stripping. You Listen, just, right now I can't be against anything because I'll take anything that comes my way. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the question, wait a minute though. The question for everybody in the comment section, does the OnlyFans equal sexual acts or is it just nudity? This is your game, guy. So I'm asking, is it is it a girl? No, I, if I say OnlyFans, I'm talking about the, the like 90% or 95% of all, all the gr- girls that I know that have OnlyFans play with themselves and video themselves doing fucking whether it's dildo vibrator fingers like it's all that shit okay you know what we'll do three we'll do three scenarios you got stripper only fans with nudity and only fans with sexual acts what's what's the guy's name that does oh, the, one more for that hold on hold on oh, wait what's the other one paul what's the fourth only fans no but like no nudity but like lingerie kind of stuff no that's that's fucking instagram you <laughs> asshole <laughs> yeah that's instagram okay <laughs> Okay, well, I could be another category. She's What's like, you know, she does that stuff on Instagram. Okay, yeah, yeah that, I, that's that, true. That's true. Okay, but Instagram's fine because if if it's too nudity, Instagram is gonna fucking no. Block but you it said anyway. oh, you they said, put like, a lot of stuff. But, but you said you wouldn't date a girl that is like, you know, provocative on Instagram. But I'm saying if I if there was an, if it was a choice, I mean that stuff's all over the place on Instagram. It's just like being in a bikini. I'd rather that than anything else. Okay, okay. yeah, that's too easy. That's too easy. Yeah, okay. strip club or OnlyFans. Yeah, but when I say only bands, it's not like nipple. What is it? Then we have a three. Like, then we have three. Then we have three. Oh, you're talking no, about. When I say only fans, it means like they're they're actually playing with themselves and and they're naked and all that. So only fans with penetration. <laughs> and then only fans without penetration. No, because if she's naked standing there like this, is still a no go. Okay, all right. So we'll just no, say, be no videos. We'll just say strip club. And the same thing that they do at strip club on OnlyFans because they touch each other. They touch themselves at strip clubs. They make out and stuff. They kiss. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Strip club or OnlyFans? We'll see what people think is better. I don't know what I would pick. I think think OnlyFans. But I think so too, because a strip club, you get the possibility of her leaving with a dude, leaving the club with a guy. That's true, guy. You know, somebody's got enough money to offer. That's true. If the strip club, you have a chance of her bailing with one of the dudes that came there. Yeah, leaving the bar with the guy. Oh, so now the or, got it. Now the or going in the champagne room. Not, or, now the stripper just turned into a cheating whore. Well, you never know. Maybe she's, well, or she's a whore spot. over here. She's going to be a whore over there. Well, <laughs> yeah. well how about the private rooms? A lot of stuff goes on. Yeah, in the private maybe room. she's giving fucking head for money. Who knows? Yeah. Listen, if, if I dated a stripper and she did that, that's... <laughs> Yeah, Don't but the point is, the point is, if you dated, you might not know. if you dated OnlyFans girl, there's no chance that that happened. Right. You she's just in her, she's just in her bedroom somewhere. You guys are yeah. real pricks. <laughs> <laughs> the tough questions. I would, ra- I would rather. Okay, a lo- <laughs> a loyal stripper over a fucking OnlyFans. <laughs> <laughs> at the, at the preface. <laughs> Uh, hey, listen, more importantly, I think I want to move to Texas. Where? Paul, Paul you want to move to Texas? You're such sure. a fucking... City. What? what? Well, I've been... I've, you know I'm looking at houses currently in Texas. I'm such a fucking what? What's, where are you looking, guy? And you're Prosper, not looking at houses. You're lying. 
<laughs> Look how bad he is. Wait a minute. Can you tell me why I'm an asshole just because I said I want to move to Texas? Hey, I'm talking oh, to you. Hold on. God, why Texas, talk- right? What? Why Texas? Hold on. Texas. Brent yeah. sent me this listing. Yeah. It looks nice. And he I goes, barely see it. You can walk you to my he goes, you can walk to my house from this one. I'm looking at houses. I have branches. Okay, what does that have to do with me being an asshole? I don't understand. Because you knew I was, I told you I was moving to Texas. I didn't before. fucking know that. You never said nothing. You and fucking saboteur. You absolutely. What if, what if, I don't think you told me that, but what if you did? And I'm like, guys, move to Texas. I want to Texas. That would be good, not bad. No, because I hate you deep down inside. No, you don't. You love me. You know you love is me. It, is it Texas? Dude, let me tell you something. Are you, are you being serious? I am. I, I had a long conversation with uh, Chris Tuttle. You remember when we did the podcast? I think I told you when I can't. When I when I decided to do Texas, I by the way I'm just going to say this: I love you guys because the fact that I can talk to you guys and it's like being on a phone call with my buddies and it go on for hours. Like I could do this with you guys all day. You yeah, guys, I don't think, think, I don't think, I don't think me that happy. I don't think anybody's going to actually watch this podcast, but it's okay. We're just we're just we're just having our own conversation. So oh, you, you better post it. Um, <laughs> this is how I ended up competing in Texas. I got home. For our, I got home from How the Tampa. fuck did we go from moving to Texas to you competing in Texas? I'm going to steal, steal everything. Because I want to tell you what. <laughs> well, I don't, you know what? I don't need to fucking, I don't need you laughing at me, bro. I'm, I'm laughing at you, guy. I'm laughing with you. He's laughing at me. He's laughing at me. <laughs> yeah. I, just I, like I got home from Tampa because I changed my flight to get home a day early. So I got home on Saturday because I competed on Friday. I got home Saturday more, um, afternoon, or no, sorry, in the morning. I got home. I got a phone call that they want. They they kind of were. They want me to, to move on to bigger and better things, and they want me to retire. After I got that phone call, my buddy who owns um, a uh, SC Arms, which is a gun store where I buy my guns from, unannounced, drove over on his Harley, made me an offer on my house that day so i made a phone call back to branch and said hey this is what's going on he gave me his realtors info and then i've been looking at houses i'm actually going to texas in two weeks to fucking look at the houses to see which if i found so one I actually want to buy so you're legit like moving i'm legit looking like you're, looking hardcore yeah i'm fucking serious i want to move to texas let me tell you something oh, you're gonna have to come you're gonna have no friends left if i leave who had if you sell your house you can it, you can take whatever I don't know what your house is, but by the looks of it, you're, it's a pretty penny. What you get for your house, you can literally take half of it, throw it in a bank, and buy a fucking mansion. Dude, a I mansion. know. So Chris, so Chris is living in Fort Worth. Chris Tuttle. Tuttle is in Fort yeah, Worth. Yeah, I'm looking at like Prosper, like on the outskirts of Dallas, like a little further away from like that area, because that's like that's where, is, like, San, is San Antonio in Texas? It is, San right? San Antonio is like three yeah. hours away. Yeah, yeah. but it's so, like three hours from Dallas. So I looked in San Antonio too. The fucking houses, it's like they're all new and they're not that expensive for the fucking what you get for the house. Really? I thought San Antonio was one of the more expensive cities in Texas. It I'm is. pretty, sure, I'm it pretty is. sure it was San Antonio. You know, Fuad, if uh, when I was in Texas, somebody goes, and this is obviously different because I, I live in America, but somebody goes, why Texas? I go, because two things that mean the most to me are my country and my religion. I go and you don't find more America and God than you do in Texas. I'm not going that far. I just like the fucking state. I've been there a few times. I thought it was awesome. People are great. Yeah. Food is fucking awesome. You're right by Mexico if you want to take a vacation. You're literally as far if you, if you own a company, Fuad like Hostel, he's in literally one of the best places to be for logistics because he's in the middle of everything to ship, right? Well, so kind of. You, you kind of. Kind of. Yeah, kind of. I mean, I, internationally, no, but state and domestically, yeah. No, no, I get it. Yeah, I get it. Um, and it's it's a place where it, the the rules are way different and and they're better with as far as this COVID is concerned. And mm-hmm. if something positive were to happen or something bad were to happen in the states, places like Florida, like Texas, would probably be the states you want to be in because they're not going to fucking budge if shit goes south. You know? Yeah, mm-hmm. I didn't think about it that far. Like I said, I just like the state. I've been there a few times. I thought it looked clean. I thought there was a lot of good restaurants. I thought it was look, a, look, look like a nice place to live. Google. Not to mention, not to mention, it's got a good bodybuilding community, and a lot of us are down there. I thought oh, I might be fun look, to live there. Look up oh, the Vegas. area. Look up the area. Prosper. I thought about Vegas too. I like Vegas. I like Vegas. Jay fucking loves it there. I can't. Yeah. Man. Too no. many. It's too, nah, bro. It's not my scene, man. No way. 
Oh, I'm not talking about the fucking strip and shit. I just like because like I've stayed like in a in a what's Airbnb. It called? an Airbnb off like you know outside the strip and all that. I feel like I liked it, you know, driving around, going to the grocery store, fucking going to the. Like, no, that's cool. I, nice. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but like, I'm a big. I, I know what Paul's going to say. I like, I like the change of seasons. I like to be like, oh, it's fall. The fucking leaves are coming down. I'm in a hoodie and shorts, and then when yeah. it snows and it's Christmas and like everything's covered in white and the trees are fucking have snow and you know then the spring comes and fucking things start to bloom and the colors. I, I enjoy that. Yeah, I see. I hate the winter, but people are like, but when you got a snow blow and you got to mow your lawn, I'm like. I, that's I like being outside. Like I yeah. enjoy my land. Like I, I kind of see that. You're an outdoorsman guy, huh? Can, you're an outdoor guy. Oh, dude! I bought two guns, uh, two more guns the other day. <sighs> but I don't think Me you have Fuad. to. Be, I don't think you have to be an outdoors guy. I kind of like that. I kind of feel that. I don't yeah. mind, even if I didn't move to Texas and I just stayed here. I'd like to have a like a a nice home somewhere that was warm all the time. But I still like. I still think I'd like to be able to come back in the winter sometimes. Yeah, even if lot. it was for even if it was for a couple of weeks or whatever, but Christmas. I do I'll like the, I do like to change the season. Yeah. yeah. Are you guys, what What are the rules like? If you guys wanted to come to Jersey and be, I'd be like, hey guys, come for a week and just stay with me. We'll fucking do a bunch of podcasts and train, and have a good time because I'm by myself. What are the rules? Are you, do you guys have to like do this crazy quarantine thing and like yeah. a hotel for when, we, when we come back, we do to Canada. Going to the U.S. is nothing. You can fly into the. Oh, okay, let me ask you a question: If you had a vaccine, would that change? Yeah, then you went out to quarantine when you come back. Hmm. You still got to get a negative test going into the U.S. and coming back to Canada. But so even if you get a negative test when you're entering Canada, they still require you to quarantine. You can you quarantine if you're not house? vaccinated. Yeah, can as of right now, can you quarantine. Do, you, do they put you in a hotel no, or you got no. to go home? You go, go home. home. You go home. They call and check on you. But that that mean we got an election coming up too. That could all change too very soon. Because that would be thing be cool for you guys to fucking come here for like. I know. Do some fucking go. cool shit, man. Shoot some guns. Fucking... Paul, would, Paul wouldn't leave his kids for a week. Maybe not a week, but a couple <laughs> days, yeah. A weekend? Like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, go home Sunday? I would definitely do that. Yeah. We got to do something like that because this, this fucking... I've, I've gotten to know you guys so much. Why don't you just come here? It'd be easier. We're both Guy here. can't. He's not vaccinated. What the so? Americans can't come in if they're not vaccinated. When did that start? Ever since they reopened the border on, uh, back in August. You're not even Ameri- be, not vaccinated even be, Americans. Not even be quarantines? No, he's not allowed in the country. I'll show him my old fake vaccination. Holy shit, card that that's crazy! Yeah, I didn't know right that. Now it's just open to vaccinated Americans. That's, that's wild. Like, that's so know. nuts. Let's right. talk about the fact that your beard looks mighty fucking darker than your usual. Yeah, yeah, I'm thinking about shaving it off for the weekend, guy. Let's talk Don't about the fluid. Now you actually look really good, bro. That would be your fluid. <laughs> you. It's like me. Thank you, guy. Yeah. I, I've been considering taking it off. I got a haircut. Why? Why? Ah, there's some days I look at it, I'm like, I mean, let's be funny. realistic. If we really sit down and break it down, you're not that good looking of a guy. So that actually cover your face a little bit. I'm not guy, really sure why you're saying guy, that. He looks like he's 90 uh, years old. No, I don't look like nine years old. I was told I look like why don't you get the touch of gray and then it kind of have it like see you're yeah, that's what I gotta do because you're okay, you're, so, you're full gray. If you got yeah. the touch of gray, then you're you, right. act, you actually look like me. Oh, yeah, great. okay. So oh, do dude, that's great. That's great. Do you put that stuff in? Fuad, you're a real piece of shit. What? He goes, oh, yeah, great. We should, what you should, you should, you should actually, wait a second. If you actually, hold on, we should all look this way. Look, look this way. No, the other way, Paul, you fucking turd. Well, Fu has turned the wrong way. No, he's not. What See, mean? my screen Keep is. Keep your fucking head that way. Okay. Because I know you're, because look, Fuad is what you usually look like when you're younger. And then you start to look like me when you get older. And then when you get, you get an old fuck, you look like you. So it's a perfect fucking, it's like the perfect. Like, the evolution. Yeah. You missed it earlier. Dark, right? little gray. And then See, I, look nice and, I look nice and young. Look at that. Yeah, that's natural. I'm going to let mine fucking hang, bro. You're going to grow it right I'm, I'm, it I'm grow just away. growing out the tip. I'm growing out the tip. I like that too. I like you ever play that game? Just the tip? Like the taper. I tried playing just the tip once, but I always end up going all the way in. <laughs> i always lose i always lose that game <laughs> um all right did you, guys did you did you make any question can we end with like a question or two i didn't uh yeah let me see what i got here i i just enjoy your company actually my dog uh, just in the dry. here you want to see my how the, oh the, i gotta tell you guys a secret let's check hold on hold on let's check the water in guys basement oh, oh yeah let's see this is it still raining yeah it's still fucking raining. yeah there. 
Yeah, look, ready? That's not terrible. Say, look. Fubai, can you see? Can you I see? can't see the floor. It's a little wet. That's okay. That's not I, too I, bad. I was expecting like flooding. No, yeah, no, no, no. I got to keep an eye on it. See? Yeah, at least your oh, basement's not finished, so it's not wrecking anything. Yeah, this is where, see how big the fucking basement is? Like this, like, this is part of the house you can't even see. Yeah. Let me see the, the sword. Right? Let's see the sword. <laughs> what sword? What? A sword. Oh, oh. you got a samurai cool. sword on the wall. Look. <laughs> yeah, are you like that guy? You have like, you have different weapons all throughout the house just in case? Yeah. Oh yeah, I got I got I got sword there, I got a sword up there. I got I got a bunch of shit in my house too, all over the place. Nothing really good though. Yeah, I got like a I got a ball bearing like bat. I got a baseball bat. Where'd you get the ball bearing bat? I order on an army surplus site. Am I allowed to show you some like toys or like an anvil kind of thing? No, like the ball bearing, the the one that you whip at the cops have that you whip out. Oh, like a nightstick. Like a nightstick, yeah, but it's got the ball bearing on the end. Oh am I allowed to show you the gun I got? Or the like banners. I don't think it's I don't think it's against YouTube policy. <laughs> is is it? Legal, then? I don't think it's bad. No, I don't think so. Look at it's the safe you have. Is there, is there <laughs> safe. Bodies on it? Look at look at this safe. <laughs> oh my god, that's awesome, guy. Oh. <laughs> look at this safe. <laughs> look at you can like walk into that. It's like how the one I just got. What? Oh what? let me see. Holy that's shit. That's sweet. It's got the little fucking I'll come to your house and we can go fucking shoot that thing. Yeah. Well, hold on. Ready for this? So I got this. This is this is I'm ready. This is my newer one. I got a bunch. This is that. But check out this bad When boy. did you when did you get these? I just that one I just got the other day. I didn't how, much, got it. how much does a gun like that cost? Can I ask you that? That one was uh 1400 Holy fuck. How many rounds can you fit in a clip in that? Uh you're only allowed to have 10 round mags in Jersey. Oh, really? Okay. And this this gun was 18. This was more expensive. <laughs> Would you rather? What, what, okay, go ahead. Let me see. That's new as well. What kind of guns that? What, what is, kind it? is it? It's a fucking. It's it's a CZ Tactical Two Sport. Is that good? It's fucking gorgeous. I What's can't tell the difference. Was, All the guns look the same to me. This was seventeen hundred. Yeah. I'm no, I'm there's no way I'm not even close to being a gun. You know who gave me this? I got so much. Brian Dobson gave me this to go board. Oh, home. really? And he okay. wrote on it. He wrote on the sheet. That yeah. doesn't surprise put. doesn't surprise me at all. Yeah, he's probably killed some boar with that. Dude, if you can't, dude, you got the stuff I have in the safe row would blow your mind. I got so much fun shit in here. How much money is it? We got time. Let's see. Is there panties? Huh? Is there panties? We got some time. Yeah, yeah, is there any? Uh, there, any there's uh, a box. Of, there's, there's how many box. Box, how many panties, <laughs> how, many, how many panties are in there? <laughs> Oh no! I just said, said there's your money in there. No, I said panties. All those panties fermenting in there. Uh, panties? No, no, no. I got look. I got my old school revolvers. Oh yeah. How many fucking guns do you have? I got I got a uh, thirty eight special. Oh yeah. We got to move to the U.S. Ball. Charles Bronson. We got to get some guns. Huh? It's like a fuck. I'm yeah, moving. I'm moving. Guns, guys. I'm moving the inside of my thing. Can you see the inside of it? Yeah. Shit. You're ready for war. Somebody comes to yeah. us, they're, they're fucked. Armageddon. That's the whole fucking, the whole point is you don't want fucking anybody coming to your house. Well, you got enough shit in your house to make sure nobody fucks yeah. you. Yeah. Including, including two pit bulls. <laughs> ah, my fucking, my one would run away. My other one, my, my one would do something. All right, listen. What? This is something you would like. What the fuck is that? Knife? Guy. Yeah, fuck oh, you. what is that's that? For, uh, that's for, that's uh, for no, this is, are you kidding me? The Vermies for me. That's for uh, that's, your, that's your gun. I got huge hands for it. If we go, but, if uh, we go to, if we go to guys, they'll shoot that gun. Whatever. I shot more <laughs> way more guns than you have. What? Uh, what kind? What do you call those guns, guy? What do they call again? Which one? Derringer. Which, what which, is that little one? This one is. Uh, is this a Smith? This is my. These ones my dad gave me that he had. These. These are old, but I mean they still they're they still shoot good. This one is, is this a, uh, this one's old. No, this is a uh, uh, SIG. Oh. Yep. I got uh, that SIG and I got this, this one. This is another SIG that I have. This is my favorite gun that I shoot. This one's nice. Old. Yeah. Me and Foot are taking a gun course. Dude, Sometimes. if you guys, if, if you guys come here, we can go to the range and you guys don't have to have um, a gun license. All you got to do is, as long as I have my gun license because I'm registered there, all you guys do is literally walk in, you watch a five minute video, and we can shoot all day. I think Paul's got that too because Paul's got yeah, his license. Too, Paul's yeah. got his license for work, so I can go with him. Yeah, and shoot. I I just have mine at work. I don't have one for like 
my house, which that's what I, I want. I just got a new one of these in. Yeah, but I think you need like another license to have one at your house. Probably. I do. I do. Yeah. yeah. See this? What is what that? Is that? So I got a new chili. You know the chili pad? I got uh, one of those. It's fucking I just got amazing. Another, I, the, I, I know. I that's got for it from you. Yeah. But yeah, I, I'm the one who fucking told you guys about it. So I just got a brand told, new one. Guy told us about it on one of the podcasts, and I had a friend reach out to them, and they fucking sent me one, and it's amazing. Did, so they, you send put you, it did they send you the double? Yeah, you put it. You put it under your bed sheet. Yep. Okay. Fill it with water, and yep. you just set it to the temperature you want, and it stays there all night long. Yep. Really? I yeah. set it. I set it to like sixty-six degrees. So many sick. people think it's bullshit. I put it on oh. low, and I you do it like an hour. I I put it on about an hour and two before I go to bed. When I get in bed, I love getting under cold fucking like yeah. cool sheets. Yeah, me too. And it stays fucking cool all. And I actually like the fact that it's got that little like fan sound to it. Yeah, like, it's got like a hum. Yeah. It's got like a hum. Because, it. yeah, I think that fucking it. Do people and I? People are like, "Oh, you're just promoting them because you." So, guy, I'm like, that company doesn't send me anything. Guy, listen to this. So after you told us about it, I had somebody get it for me. I got it in my house, and I still thought it was kind of bullshit. It sat in a box next to my bed for like a fucking month, and then I'm like. I was changing the sheets one weekend and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to put it on my bed. See how the fuck it's fucking amazing. Hmm. I'm like, how did I not have this my whole life? Dude, it sounds it really nice. well for me. Heads. Okay. I got to tell you guys. So I'm, I'm a little older now. So I'm not as hot as I used to be when I was in, when I was like my biggest, Oh, this would have been a fucking God. That would have saved your life. If you, yeah. if you guys listening are fucking in the middle of your off season, you're a fat fuck and you're huge and you're sweaty all the time. Like I used to be get that fucking thing. I'm telling you guys, it's like, your bed will be cold all night long. I'm gonna order it's, myself. It's, what do they call again? Chili pad. There's, chili a, few, pad. there's, there's chili a few pad? different. There's a few different companies, one. but that one's Chili Pad. Yeah. Okay. And uh, you know what? I'll say this: their customer service too, because I had an issue with mine for some reason, and they sent me a. I I told them what was wrong with it. I sent them a video. They sent me a. But I've had this one for fucking two and a half, three three years. They oh, sent wow. me a brand new one. I sent them the video. What was wrong with it? They said, okay, here's your replacement. Here's your return sticker. When you get the new one, put the new stuff in the box. We'll send it out to you. I I'm said, gonna, great. I'm going to get them to sponsor. Cool they are. Yeah. I'm going to get them to sponsor the podcast. Mm-hmm. I'll, start, I'll start doing chili pad chili pad ad reads. Dude, That's a great you know, thing. I know you and three or four other people that told me that they got, well, I, my other three buddies actually bought it because I mentioned it on the podcast and they watched. Yeah. No, it works. Yeah, All right. Cool. We'll, do one, we'll do one question and we'll go. Sure. Would you rather poop in the only toilet at a party knowing that you'll clog it or poop in the bushes in the backyard? Bushes in the backyard. Yeah, that's a stupid question. Really? You push poop in the bushes in the backyard? Rather, rather than, than embarrass myself dropping a fucking hot log into a toilet that's going to back yeah. up? Yeah, I'll take my fucking... Oh, wait, 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 wait. You're not thinking it through. Think it through for a second. What? If you go outside, shit in the bushes, first of all, you got to wipe your ass with like leaves or something. Done it before. Okay. That first of all, somebody could see you in the bushes taking a shit at a party. That also would be fucking very embarrassing. First of all, if I'm gonna shit in the woods, nobody's gonna see me. That's not it's on the woods, it's in the backyard at a party. Somebody's out there having a smoke. Hey, guys in the bush taking a shit. No, I would pull up my boyfriend. It takes a video of you (laughs) shitting in the bush. I would come on my boyfriend, bro. I gotta take a fucking shit. So you gotta stand here. And if somebody comes, you gotta fucking call my name. Oh, that's a good wingman. I don't know, man. If I was your wingman, I'd be like, that's taking a shit. Yeah. <laughs> Unless, or, 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 what, or what I would do is I would shit in the bathroom, walk not, out, that and then walk back in and be like, go. somebody flooded the fucking bathroom. That's oh. what answer I was looking for. See, oh, it says, what? You did that for that's, me. Right away. To me, that's <laughs> more. No, no, that, but he's lying. I would do it. That's I would, more I would, of a I, risk, though. No, no. That's I was, risky. Wait a minute. I wasn't thinking what Guy thought. I just thought. It says clog. It doesn't say you have to flush. So I'm thinking I clog the toilet and I just leave. I'll leave the party. Yeah, oh, just leave. I yeah, that's what I would do. Yeah, yeah, I just take. Okay. So when somebody says clog the toilet, I was thinking clogged, overfilled water oh, and turds on the. Oh, because you can clog the toilet. Because you know what happens? Like you can clog the toilet and you try and flush it, and you see that it's not going. You stop. And I, what I would do is, if I knew I was going to clog it, I would do like some like fucking sneaky shit and make my way into the bathroom when nobody was looking. And then shit, and then open the door and be like, guys, I, I came in here to take a piss and the fucking toilet's clogged. Nah, you would drop them in 20 minutes, guy. You'd be Obviously known, you. You. everybody would know it was you. I would just shit and leave. Yeah, I would just leave the party all together. I would just be like, I'm going home. Fuck it. I'm I would just say, I think it's weird. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're that friend, huh? 
Yeah. Well, I would if it was my friend's house, I would call him like on my way home. I'd be like, hey, your toilet's clogged. I fucking yeah, I'm really sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the, the only way that would work is if it's overflowing. If it if wasn't overflowing, yeah, if it's so overflowing. The door. I would still run out of there. I'd be like, it's overflowing. I would I'm too. Fucking, I'd just take off. But they're gonna know. You got to think like like how busy is the party? Is it like an eight person like dinner party, or is it like well, is it a hundred people at a fucking get wasted? Because it's a hundred people, whether the toilet's overflowing or not, I'm gonna get out and run out the fucking door. Well, it depends on where the bathroom's located. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. If it's like an eight person dinner party, then you're kind of fucked. Yeah, yeah. Because then what do you do, right? Yeah, you can't leave. Um. <clears throat> yeah. I would shit, and then get on the phone and make a phone call. And pretend like I hadn't shit yet, and then go <laughs> take a shit and be like, and make them see that I'm on the phone, and then be like, guys, I went to go to the bathroom. And the toilet's locked. <laughs> wait a minute. Okay, wait. wait a minute. Hold on. Wait, no, eight, no, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. If it's eight people, then it turns into like a game of clues. No, and wait a minute. To figure out. <laughs> so I retract that. I retract that entire statement. I would not do that. Actually, eight people, I'd get caught out at some point. If it's an eight-person <laughs> dinner party, you still I'm taking it to the bushes. Yeah, you might have to go to the bushes. Take but then you're still, the still the, to the you're going to be at dinner and people are going to be like, where's guy? I'm like, guys, I got to take a phone call. I'm just going to run outside and just, I got to make a phone call real quick. And I'd fucking haul ass to the bushes. Take a really wow. fast dump. Yeah. And then I would pretend like I got sick and I'd have to leave the party. Why? Because you pooped outside. Well, I got to go and clean myself. No, but what if you clean yourself with, like, what if well, you, first of all, if you're, you're going to sit outside, properly, we'll leave what if you, what, wait, 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 what if you do ahead of time? So you go to the bathroom, you put some toilet paper in your pocket. And you go outside and you shoot. You wipe your oh, ass worst outside. Case scenario. Okay, then I can come back to the party. I can make oh, a better worst thing. Case scenario, if yeah. you had to, it's not hard to take your underwear, rip it off, and fucking use it as toilet paper, and then just throw your underwear fucking. That's so much it's worse. Messy, Why guys? would you do it's that? Multi-wiper. Okay, what? look how a guy makes everything so complicated. He's like, just wipe your ass with your underwear and throw it away. How? How in the grand scheme of taking a dump outside is wiping your ass with a ten dollar pair of underwear that fucking? Because ass- okay, where is he gonna throw? Them? Um, underground. Okay, so let's say you're at an eight-person dinner party, in which you, in case you are, you probably know the other people pretty well. So yeah. the guy that owns the house goes out the next day to do his fucking weed whacking, <laughs> and he's like, "Look, here's a dirty pair of okay, then, underwear." Bro, Paul then, was then, outside for twenty minutes. Then you those do, Paul's dirty underwear. Then you roll up the underwear and fucking throw it in the garbage, or walk inside and like take some garbage out and then throw it in the bottom and then put garbage. On so the you're house. gonna walk inside. So listen, over. Paul. Paul, wait. So you're walk back in the house he to the dinner loves, party. He loves this shit. He <laughs> loves finding. Ga- he loves finding gaps in everything that I uh, say. You walk he, like, back. For it. He's like, you know what he's like? He's like cock. He's like the cock. He fills all the. No, gaps. no, no, no. This, is, this one's perfect. This one's the best one. So you take a shit outside. You wipe your ass in the toilet with your fucking underwear. You roll it up into a ball and you walk back in the house carrying your shitty underwear and yeah. throw it in the garbage and no one's going to see you. No, and okay. then you got to go wash your hands. Like, and then your hands full of shit. Yeah. Oh, no, I who, first of all, if I'm gonna if I have to wipe if I have to rip my underwear in pieces and and wipe my ass, I'm gonna make sure that when I'm done, I'm I have something that I can wrap it into where my hands not covered in shit. Look at the, the length he goes to. Well, you just go to the bathroom, you take some toilet paper, you put it in your pocket. Then you're like, I gotta take a phone call. If go that outside. listen, if clearly if that was the if I had an option to do that. Why would, would, it, why would it not be an option? You're at an eight-person dinner party. I'm, I'm, I'm looking well, at as... This you, is what you do. You go, I got to take a piss, right? And then you go to the bathroom, you take a piss. But you take toilet paper, you put it in your pocket. Then when you come back, you're like... Minutes? Then you go, you come back, you go, oh, I got a phone call I got to take. What's you go the outside, point? You're going to be pissing the fucking toilet bowl. You go asshole, outside. You, the anyway. you go outside, take a shit. You wipe your you ass with the toilet paper. You already, clogged, you already peed in a clogged toilet. That's right. Oh, so the toilet's not clogged yet because you didn't shit in it. Oh, the shit clogged it. I thought it was just a broken toilet. No, no, no. Listen to no. It says you you clogged the toilet. Oh, so you're okay. not shitting in the toilet. You take. Yeah, but a, he didn't say you have to shit in order for the toilet to get clogged. Okay, fine. I gotta go to the bathroom, wash my hands after dinner. So you go to the bathroom, wash your hands, put toilet paper in your pocket. Yeah. Then I gotta take a phone call. You go outside, take a phone call, shit in the bush, wipe your ass with the toilet paper, throw the toilet paper in the bush, and come back inside. But wait, you'll be gone for twenty minutes because you got to walk far away. That they yeah, can't so now, see so, you. so so now you're no because the kitchen's over here. You just go around the corner of the house. So now you're, so now you're <laughs> the corner of the now house. Just gonna, cars driving gonna, by, people walking by. No, I like the side of the litter. house. You know? <laughs> so now you're gonna litter on your friend's property with your shit filth rag. Oh, you're, you're gonna leave fucking. Bad. You're gonna leave ripped up, dirty fucking underwear there instead. I said fucking bring it inside and put it in the garbage. Like a fucking. How room. are you gonna bring it inside? How are you gonna bring it inside? How's no one gonna see you bring it inside? Bro, okay. Let's say I need to. You're gonna fold it up in your shirt. Put your no, your like say, but, bro, I would rip a couple pieces of my underwear up, wipe it, and then throw the fucking pieces that are dirty in the, un- the the unused underwear, 
and yeah. then wrap it up and then fucking bring it inside, throw it but out. How do you bring it inside? No one sees you holding your ball of underwear. Do you want me to take it's a video of him shitting outside tomorrow? <laughs> I'll do that you with the three still, point. You... I still haven't the basketball shot yet, which <laughs> by tomorrow is probably going to be in a fucking boat. I you really see. haven't unread. Me- here, ready? Unread messages. Ready? This kid. Fucking, I haven't read it yet because he. I know what it says. The little, this is how ridiculous my life is. <laughs> hey, bro, when are you going to take that three point shot? Oh, they're still bugging you. <laughs> they're still bugging you. When are you making throw. a three point shot? You said you could do. Yeah, it was a free throw. It wasn't a three yeah, pointer. I don't three know. Pointers way harder. Guys are people are always so hard on you, guy. They're like, now it's a three pointer. It was only a free throw. Tomorrow's <laughs> gonna be a fucking free throw in a boat. All right, so we're shitting in the bush. Yes. If it's an eight man party dinner party, we're shitting in the bush. It's an eight man dinner party. We're going in the bush. Well, regardless. Wait, if it's, eight, if, it's no, a, if it's a hundred man, eight, hold on. If it's an eight dude dinner party and they're my boys. I'm shitting in the toilet. I'm like, yo, you're totally No, 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 no. Yeah. It's like, but what it's there's mixed, like, it's mixed couples and, and stuff. You, it's mixed couples and you don't know all the couples. Oh, you're yeah. Definitely not shitting in the toilet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Imagine you got caught shitting in the bush, though. Oh, my God. Because sometimes oh. what you think, because sometimes like it could be like a very simple poop. And then sometimes it could be like one of the little tricks where like it, it, it's not what you think it is and it's like yeah. a nightmare. And you don't want to be leaving your fucking signature in that toilet bowl like that. No. <laughs> if it's a if it's a hundred man drunk fest, I'm just gonna clog the toilet and run out the door. Absolutely. Yeah, if, it, if, yeah. if it's if it's all dudes, I, I'll shit in the middle of the fucking living room. No, even if it's all girls <laughs> and and dudes, and everybody's all drunk, I don't care. I just shit in yeah. the toilet and leave. Yeah, it's too hard to pit. I might not even leave. I might just shit in the toilet and go sit down in the living room. Yeah, not going nothing happen. Like I didn't shit in there. Yeah, I don't know yeah. what I'm Like you went in there for a while, but I took a piss and washed my hands. Yeah, yeah. it was fine when I left it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'd say. The most embarrassing thing ever. Is walking into a bathroom in an airport and sorry on an airplane after somebody shit. Oh God! And then walking out when someone's waiting for you and they think it was you that shit in there. Yeah, that's literally literally the one of the most embarrassing things ever. I'm like, it's happened to you. Want to know a weird thing that I do? Yeah. You want to know something weird about me? There's lots when of things I weird about you. Poop in public places. I take my pants and underwear completely off. No, you don't. Where do you put them? Hang them on the back of the door. No, you. What don't. if they don't have a hook? Every time, I'll take a picture next time I do it. Wait, 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 wait. Like the maestro. Can you just wait a minute, please, for a second? I have to understand this. Okay. So you walk into the bathroom stall at McDonald's. Mm-hmm. You get naked. You take off your shoes. Yep. And um, then you uh, take. Hold on. Ready? And then you take off your pants and, and underwear and hang them on the back of the door. <laughs> yep. And you're wow. sitting there in your socks. Just uh, your socks and t-shirt. Hold on. So weird. Is he going to demonstrate what's he doing? He's got to be lying. He's got to be lying. <laughs> why would he do that? I'm, because I'm going to explain to you when I tell you why I do it, then you're going to understand why. No, there's nothing there's you can no, say. If there's, there's no, no hook, explain it. there's if nothing there's no you hook, can say that will make this normal. No. If there's no hook, let's say these are shoes, right? Yeah. First of all, you're taking your shoes off in the fucking stall of the bathroom. Which okay. Now, yeah. So hold on. If these are my shoes, if there's. Yeah. I do this more time. Now, pretend I have underwear on too. All right. I go like this. I'll take my one shoe off, pull my pants down like this, pull my underwear down, take it, roll it up like this, put my foot back in my shoe, and sit on the toilet bowl with it all rolled up like this. Why? Because every fucking time I go take a shit somewhere, there is so much fucking piss on the ground that if I let my fucking pants just hang... They would touch the fucking well, piss. Wait a down. minute. My, my pants don't hang, though. Okay, wait a minute. If wait my, a minute. If you, dude, if I sit like this and pull my pants all the way down, my bottoms of my pants touch the ground. Jesus okay, Christ. those are baggy pants. And I don't do that. To me, that's disgusting. So I always take my fucking pants. Okay, can you eat this? So please justify it. No, I either didn't take justify off it. and hang it, or I do what I just did. Oh, my God. Are you, are, are you done? Are you guys done? Also, I would never do it, but. Are you guys done? I'm done. Why don't you just fucking hold your pants up so they don't touch the floor? Yeah, like put it around your knees instead of your ankles. Well, you just said it makes sense. Why are you agreeing? Oh, on because I, I like... I, I, can't, can't, point I can't, first of all, I can't poop with my legs close together. I like to fucking spread my legs out nice and wide. Hey, wait a minute. Go back to your demonstration. Put the fucking jogging pants around your back on. What am I fucking modeling now? Just, I'm just going to show you how easy it is. First of all, why do you wear pants so fucking baggy? Who the fuck wears that? I want these to bed, you fucking twat. <laughs> okay, 
So I sit down on the toilet, but don't pull them all the way. No, take them off so you can shit. Right? But don't pull them all the way down. Just sit down right now. There. Right. Let's see. And, Move and the camera. Now, no, I can't shit like this. And now hold, right. the, hold the pants off the ground and shit. Because your knees are too close together. You, you can't shit like that. like this. Yeah. No, no, just hold them up a little bit. Pull, no, I can't, I can't. I can't spread my legs open because the fucking. The How fucking stopped. far do you Why spread your legs? Your legs? You can spread I, your legs this far? Why are your legs oh, need to be open? Well, but I'm trying to show you how I poop. Oh my god! Uh, my when I poop, I'm like this. Really? Who's, who sits that wide? You're like straddle the toilet. Right? You're I like sit, your asshole poop. is like closing again. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> I, like, I fucking... like to make listen. I the 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 least amount of it touches the side, the better up. No, but there's more side touching. Yeah, that way because yeah, your, yeah, cheeks you are, your cheeks are pushing back together. That's your legs are so wide apart. Yeah. No, the less. I didn't poop. I've been a, I've been a wide leg pooper. My no, there's the only a people li- I know that poop with their legs close together are girls. No, there's a limit. So this yeah, is like, like shoulder shoulder width, right? This is like shoulder width. Squatting, yeah, yeah. Like that's a good poop opening. But then when you yeah. you go like this, now uh, your che- your cheeks start to close in the back. Yeah, I don't like that guy. I don't know if I, I don't this know. makes sense. Yeah, I, I should poop, change that. I, I don't. I, I'm. A you must be. You must be shitting on your cheeks. Yeah, you must be. No, no. You have to be. You have to be. I I get. I have more fucking ghost poops than anything. There's no way. Where you poop and you wipe and there's nothing there because there's like cleaning. Oh, those are the best. Oh, yeah, I get those all the time. Those are like fucking, I'm like known for Because you drink Slim Husk like I do. But I have never had fucking dirty side butthole poop. Because you drink Slim Husk. <laughs> all right, that's it, guys. See you later. <laughs> Love you guys. Have a good night. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, share with your friends, and like the video. And if you get a chance, check out the description for all the different links to all the different places you can find Hostile and myself. And lastly, check out Hostile.com for our new line of supplements and all of our apparel and gear. Thanks again for watching.